So if everyone's ready, we'll go ahead and call the meeting for May 20th to order. Uh, first item is the consent agenda. And uh, we have no minutes to approve, but we do have uh, warrants AP2043, AP2043S, AP2044, AP2044S, AP2045-2. Uh, let me switch screens here. And then we have the police department vehicle maintenance policy adoption, a deaf child sign installation, Bay Road in the area of the 200 block, uh, public safety appointments for liability purposes, and a declaration of surplus property, council and aging van, E450 van with 47,773 miles on it. Uh, do we wanna pull any of those out or proceed? So move down there. Second. Second. I can right. second. second. Any discussion? It'll be sad to see that Council on Aging van go, but I guess it has to go. All right. It needed so. to go. So hearing no further discussion, all in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. So that's out of the way. And I almost forgot to say welcome to Jane. The, the Thank you. Remember, congratulations. And Thank you. And welcome. Um, and Joyce, did you want to talk for a second? You said you wanted to take a minute and say something? Just a, just a minute. Um, this is the week of uh, celebrating or being uh, grateful to emergency management staff. And um, uh, I know we did Nurses Week and everything like that, but uh, emergency management is uh, certainly out there on the front line. And I, I do want to take this opportunity to thank them for all that they do and uh, for being there. Um, Mike does manage our emergency management in town and um, Mike uh, Mason has been right along with him. I think we have a great group and and to all our uh, ambulance service people also. Um, thank you also. And that's that's what I have. And anybody else is listening. All right. Any Anybody here for public comments tonight? Uh, Jennifer, do you want to, do you see anybody that's not here for uh, budget talks? Um, Who's the 3468 number? I don't, um, it's Kristen DeBoer. Okay. Oh, are you here for public Kristen, are you here for No, I'm here for touch of land trust, uh, the CR later in the meeting. Okay. All right. Last last call. Public comments. Okay, we'll move on. Uh, oh, hello, everyone. Am I connected? Yep. Hey, John. Okay. Welcome. You're alive and well. Yeah, I'm doing good. 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 Good to see you on tonight. Congratulations, Jane. Thank you. All right. So we'll move on to uh, FY21 budget and annual town meeting warrant. So first thing that we have, uh, do we want to do, let's talk about the warrant first. We'll get that out of the way. Is, uh, is Randy joining us or David, do we, are we just oh, going through the warrant? Six. Let's go into the warrant and uh, doing two things. Uh, we're assigning a responsibility for each motion. We also need to get the recommendations of the finance committee and the select board for I think uh, six, articles tonight and then we'll get the final ones when we finish the budget on June 3rd. Um, so article four, the fund balance transfers. We have uh, three cash transfers and Looks like uh, two uh, borrowing authorization amendments. Uh, septage truck for 40000 out of sewer impact fees. So we need to return that uh, money back to sewer impact fees. And for Hockenham and Plainville Cemetery, they need to return money back to the Community Preservation Act. Okay. And then we're done with the Ford F. 
uh, the F-550 dump truck and the police cases so we can amend those borrowings so that we can tidy up the chart of accounts on those two items. Okay. So let's let's take them one at a time. Has the finance committee uh, voted on this? No. Okay. Would, or did you guys want to vote on them now or? Uh, I think we all. I I only had one question about the budget before we go forward. If if I might, um, if just David could. Uh, just fill me in here on um, the ambulance um, money that was left over. The you put everything, the two sixty six totally, into the revenues. So uh, going to the switching from the warrant to the budget is that okay, David? If we talk a little bit about that, can we knock out the warrant articles first? Just uh, okay, and because I think we're going to spend a lot more time talking about the budget than we are the. Uh, Okay, I didn't know. If, I didn't know if that had any effect on anything that we're doing for the board, David. That was the only thing I was oh, questioning. Yeah. No, if, if we come across something, we won't. We won't do that. We'll, until okay. We talk about it. Okay. Yeah. All right. So, how about the select board? Um, Article four. Um, let's see. I just have one question on the uh, septage truck. Now, we're return. Are we? I thought we were keeping an account going for that truck where we were adding money to it, or was this money to repair the, to, to retrofit the septage truck? Is there any clarification on that? Okay, so we have two articles for that total $140,000 for out of sewer impact fees for a uh, septage truck. This is a project that was initiated by Marlo Warner. Uh, and Chris Okafor has inherited it. Unfortunately, with the forty thousand uh, dollar part of that uh, of that um, project, um, the uh, former accountant uh, did not correctly give us the right numbers for the sewer impact fees, and so now we have a shortfall of twenty six thousand dollars in that account. So we need to return money to that account so that before Ju uh, July first so that we can keep that account in the black. So this is through no fault of uh, Chris Okafor or Marla Warner, we have a shortfall in that sewer impact fees. So this $40,000 transfer corrects that. Okay, that answers it, thank you. All right, any other questions on article four? Uh, no. All right, so for select board, all in favor of recommending recommending that article? So moved. Oh, Second, I don't know. I guess are we just voting, or are we, we have to move anything? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Aye, aye, guys. Okay, aye. aye, all right, aye. Upstein. All right, so four aye. zero one. Four zero one. Thank you. Is finance committee prepared to talk about this tonight? You are posted. If you want to go through them, I'm okay with it. Um, and if everybody else is, since we're on here, maybe it's, um, but we could, we could, if you want to move your meeting along quicker because you don't want to be here all night, we'll just hold a separate meeting. Okay. okay. Yeah, we'll do that then. We'll get them out of the way from our end and then we'll, uh, you guys can do your thing. Okay. All right. So the next article that needs select board um, is uh, number 10, the assessor's legal account. Do we want to assign these to anybody as we're going through them, or do we just want to do that at the end? Let's, let's see if we can uh, get everything uh, worked out in terms of the recommendation. So this is a uh, $15,000 free cash article uh, in order to prepare for a challenge on the uh, appraisal for some of the larger commercial properties in town. This was originally, a, I think, a twenty. $5,000 article has been reduced down to 15. Okay. And where's that, where's that money coming from? Free cash. Free cash. Okay. All right. Any further questions on article 10? Are they going to speak to that? Or are we?
I'm sorry, Joyce, were you thinking of town meeting or tonight? Uh, no, uh, town meeting. You can assign it to them. Okay. All right. So without any further discussion, all those in favor of recommending Article 10. I need a motion. You need a motion? I need a motion and a second. Uh, motion first. First, second. I guess. Second. Yeah. Okay. All right. All those in favor? Aye. 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 I did. Jane, did you say yes, sir? Yep. Okay. I saw the nod of the head. Jane, <laughs> you uh, muted, by the way. There we go. There we go. Sorry. Okay. Um, number 11, the Finance Committee has recommended the revolving fund um, that the select board has not. Um, just as a technicality, we're going to have to rewrite this article in order to comply with changes in municipal financial law. But uh, the operative part of this article is still the same, that we're creating a new revolving fund for the Council on Aging in order to underwrite the expenses associated with operating the Council on Aging van. Fees collected from riders up to $3,000 will be used for anything that we need to do, repairs, gasoline, tires, whatever. Okay. Uh, so moved. Second. All in favor of recommending Article 11. I have a question. Yes. Question is, we can, I don't know that we would collect fees of $3,000, but we spend $2,000 and we collect $4,000 in fees. Are we allowed to spend uh, or keep the extra $2,000? Uh, there's, there's an upper cap of uh, $5,000 on this article. So you, you can keep it uh, up to $5,000 as, as of July 1st. If you have anything more than that, that, that excess goes back to the general fund. Okay. All right. So all in favor of Article 11? Aye. 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 All right. Five zero. Oh. Um, Article 12, transfers to stabilization funds. This has not been recommended by anybody yet. Uh, this is an absolutely essential for um, keeping the town afloat for the next uh, um, couple of years. This is part of the defense in depth strategy that I articulated at the end of April. Um, free cash, $25,000 to the unemployment trust fund uh, and free cash, 183383 to the stabilization fund for future use. Wait a minute. That's not in there. I got. I must have the wrong one here. So you got stabilization. Oh. How much for stabilization? One eighty-three, three eighty-three. One eighty-three, two eighty-three. Stabilization. Uh, three eighty-three is what I show. <laughs> one eighty-three, two eighty-three. Well, whatever is left over from free cash, whatever surplus free cash, which would be somewhere in the neighborhood of one hundred eighty thousand dollars. We need to we need to safely stow this so that it's protected so that we can use it in FY 2022 if we need it. I was just going to ask if we could wait on this one until after the budget discussion, just because it seems like yeah. or we could just say the balance instead of 183, 383, just say the balance of free cash. You've got to be specific in the article. Well, we will. We'll come back to it. Yeah, let's skip this one and move on. All right. The stabilization, the stabilization part we can uh, put on hold, but the other part, you know, I guess we could, unless you want to hold on all of the money here from free cash until after. So let's let's just move on to the next one, David. And then we can right, come back. The next one is number thirteen, the capital article. Uh, there are a lot of capital requests that I'm recommending that we defer until the fall town meeting until we have a better sense of how things are shaping up. But there are five 
ones that I think we should work on right away because they're ti they're either timely or um, they're they're helpful for improving the town's economic future. Uh, the first one is the emergency generator for the public safety complex for one hundred and five thousand uh, dollars. This was something that we uh, approved at town meeting last year, but it was not approved at the ballot. Uh, uh, election in December. Uh, this was brought back because we have a, a very ancient uh, public safety complex emergency generator. It powers the, the station, police, fire, ambulance, dispatch. Uh, the source of funding would be borrowing within the levy, so there would be no impact upon taxes. All right, so we're not going to have to We don't have to go to the ballot to approve that correct we don't, we, okay all right that's that was a big mistake last year but um, i'll go with it this year thank you uh, in, the the, mean, in the meantime joyce uh, i had talked with the fire chief and we went over and there's a couple of uh, sections of the present building not on the emergency generator so yeah. he's going to have to do a little bit of electric work on top of putting the new generator in. Okay. All right. And what, what we should do, that's absolutely correct. We should do that. Okay. At Lee Media, we need to move them out of the library once the senior center is up and the CPA has set aside a couple hundred thousand dollars to work on the library. So we, uh, we have uh, 5,000 uh, already set aside for them. This is raising an additional 5,000. This would come out of the, their reserves. Uh, they have about a quarter of a million in dollars in reserves. So this would have no impact upon taxes. Okay. All right, the next one is the school department IT for 63,300. Again, borrowing within the levy, so no debt exclusion, no impact upon the taxes. Uh, this, I think, is important because it helps us. Um, in March, uh, everybody had to go to remote learning, and they did an outstanding job doing that. Um, but that was done on the fly, and I, I think that now that we have a summer, we can do a much better job for our school children um, should the need arise for additional remote learning come September. So this would be an investment in the school children and an investment um, in preserving the quality of education in Hadley. Absolutely. I agree with that. So I, I have a quick is question. Is Ann still on? Yeah, I'm here. Is Ann, is Ann still on? I'd like to hear, is this going to enhance uh, the online uh, things if, if we do not go back to school in September? Yeah, John, it'll help with a couple of things. It'll certainly help with online learning. It will get us, what we'll purchase with this, um, will get us to one-to-one -one devices, student, one-to-one -one for students in grades three through 12. Um, we don't, uh, we're still investigating with K through two about what makes the most sense in terms of kinds of devices, but one-to-one -one with Chromebooks. So what happened now is that you have some families where they may have a Chromebook from school, but they have more than one child. And if parents are also working at home, it gets really, it's, it's really complicated to manage. So getting the one-to-one -one is helpful in terms of learning, takes the stress off of families. It also um, will help us the students will be assigned a device for the entire year. So even when they're in school, it's going to help us a great deal. We won't have to clean these devices, right? So when they're in school, we're gonna to have to clean all these devices if we're swapping them off between children. Um, so we'd like to be able to assign a device to a child. So it'll have both a, a tech and learning advantage and it'll also have a health advantage, a hygiene advantage of not having them pass them around. Mm -hmm. we'll, we'll also buy devices, um, we're, we, this won't get us here, but we do have a goal of having faculty and staff um, also to be uh, with with laptops. Um, so we don't have everybody there yet, which is uh, challenging when folks are working at home. Um, and their own personal equipment is of varying quality. 
and and then carts to um, care for the Chromebooks when we're in school. So is uh, it something that we're going to be able to move on right away or is there going to yeah. be a delay after this poll? No. So as soon as you do it, well, and that's why we're grateful if it's um, if the finance committee and the select board agree that this is a good idea. Doing this now allows us to get all of them configured over the summer. I mean, not that that's a major task, but get all of our equipment kind of ready to go over the summer rather than waiting for the fall and trying to do it during the school year. Sounds good. Ready to go if we have to. Yeah. My question on this uh, dollar amount is, can any of this be paid for out of savings from not running uh, two school facilities for three months this year for cost savings of, uh, you know, janitorial supplies, uh, electric heat, uh, you know, all, all of those stuff that go along with having two buildings shut down. Um, you know, time, times are tight as we're going to see in the discussions mm -hmm. coming up here. So I, yeah. this is the same amount that was requested, I think, or pretty close to it, uh, last town meeting. So I would, I would hope that some of the savings from not operating the schools could be put into this instead. Right. So, and I'm gonna uh, also let David Nixon jump in too. One of the things that I had asked about was if it turns out that there's also some sort of stimulus funding that could be used to purchase something like this, um, is there, so what are the steps to, to, to allow us to, make sure that we don't expend in the town's money. And David certainly can explain that part better of um, if it passes um, that if we were made aware of funding, stimulus funding in late June, even in early July, um, then we, then we just wouldn't borrow the money. And David can speak to what, what would, happened with that. We are using money from the operating budget, David. We are using money from the operating budget to upgrade our servers, which are in really in, we're in a precarious position right now with our uh, server capacity and our server operation. So we are using um, money from the operating budget to make tech upgrades now this year. So we are doing that, but um, this, this article is, we're not, we put the Chromebooks in this article and we're upgrading the servers out of, out of uh, savings in the operating budget this fiscal year. And then David Nixon, I don't know if you wanted to speak to if, um, if it turned out that there was uh, funding available that I'm not currently aware of to purchase these kinds of things for schools. Hello, I'm back. I think you missed it. <laughs> oh, did you miss it? Well, it wasn't that riveting. Um, perhaps. <laughs> the... <laughs> Sorry, I'm uh, it, it really, it wasn't my best work, David. I'm not hurt. Don't worry about it. Uh, <laughs> and frankly, the select board, I think, probably knows the answer. That if there's, I, I do, when you say, when uh, John or Joyce asked the question about, are we ready to move? Um, I want to get the work done during the summer, but it's not like on June 19th, I want to turn around and say, get everything signed. I'm going to go out and go shopping because I will constantly be looking to see if there's any signal from the state that the state is going to, or the federal government is going to provide specific funding to upgrade school technology, which case we wouldn't need to use the money and, um, and it would revert back to the town. What that process looks like is what David could speak to, or perhaps the select board is already well aware of it. Sounds good yeah, to me. Yeah, so the so select, board are in <laughs> select board are entirely in the driver's seat on this article. This is the uh, town meeting is only authorizing you to borrow. It's not mandating that, that you do borrow. So. June 18th, we uh, passed this article. June 19th, there's a bunch of stimulus money. Uh, the select board can simply not borrow, not sign the documents, not uh, authorize the borrowing to occur. And also to go back to your question, David, Phil, is that um, I'm gonna say what I always say. I'm probably sometimes not the, the adamant advocate I could be should be for the schools, but I say this because I know uh, the town has a lot of challenging decisions to make, and I know every single elected official in town supports the schools. But if if your financial recommendation is that mm, we can do this, but we can't do this much, I mean, we're grateful for for anything. So um, 
anything is helpful. Yeah, and I'm obviously I, I think you know the IT stuff uh, has to stay up to date and and be provided for the students. I just you know we're looking at hard times and hard decisions, and I it's I don't think I ever see the schools ever give back money to free cash or not often. So I mean mm-hmm. this if if there's any a time for you know. Uh, pinching pennies now now is the time to to do it unfortunately so that that's why i just want you know to have that conversation i I have to disagree with you david i have i have seen the schools give back money um and i'm sure that annie will by the end of the year know what her budget is and how she can disperse that money and bring it back you know there's always a lump sum there on what we've had to do with um children that are in more need than others and somehow they're still having to have those services, whether it's by Zooming or, or whatever. So, um, you know, I'm, I'm sure that by the time that we start wrapping up the end of the year budget that Annie will look at that and see what she can to do to help the town. I think they're pretty good at that. Yeah, and I, I didn't hear anything other than that. Thank you, Joyce. And I certainly, one of the things that we, we do try to do and we did in the in the revising of the budget, so the, the decrease in request for local contribution is um, we monitor school choice and then try to apply more school choice. So maybe what you're thinking of like just this give back versus we say, well, we apply more school choice funds to the operating budget to um, reduce the increase to local contribution. But yes, we'll always look at that and um, and see how our desire is to be helpful and to work with the town. Yeah. So I, I have a question. David. Um, are is the sixty three thousand dollars to buy just Chromebooks or to no. increase the capability of your server? No. So the the sixty three thousand uh, dollars. What we are looking at is one hundred and forty Chromebooks, fifty at Hadley Elementary, and ninety at Hopkins Academy. That will get us to one to one for students in grades three through twelve. That's roughly thirty five thousand dollars. Forty staff devices, and our goal to try to get to one to one with staff. That's roughly twenty four thousand dollars. And then carts for the Chromebooks, forty three hundred dollars is what we budgeted. So that's what that would be for thirty five thousand student Chromebooks. 24,000 staff devices, uh, 4,300 Chromebook carts. The upgrades to the server are being taken out of operating budget uh, this fiscal year. So reallocation from our operating budget this fiscal year. Thank you. Sure. I think Linda had something. Yeah, I, I just wanna point out that this is a borrowing authorization, but we don't, also, we don't automatically borrow the 63.3. What we do is borrow what's actually spent. So if we approve 63300 and the school finds 30000 in its budget at the end of the year and applies that towards it, that's we would just borrow that much less. And it would not matter what we voted. We only borrow what we actually need at the time. Yeah, so uh, there's no sense. harm in having a higher number than actually ends up having to be new- needed. Yep, that makes sense. Any, yeah, uh, so state any, and federal come up with funding, then we won't have to borrow the whole amount. We won't borrow. Yes. Yeah. 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 Can I get a motion, please? So moved. Second. Okay. All right. All in favor of recommending. I just had a, I had a request. Uh, sorry. Just to, yes, real quick is um, at town meeting. Can we, this, I guess this is kind of a question for Jennifer, but could we have pictures of these items projected? somewhere so people can see what they're voting on. Cause I think that was a downfall of last year is not having images of these things. I don't they know. They don't know what of. Chrome, they don't know what Chromebooks are. They probably, I'm sure people don't know what Chromebooks are. <laughs> I don't think a lot of people. Even, might. even this old girl, even this old girl does. <laughs> yeah. But you've been on the select board for how many years and that's part of being on the select board. So. Oh, so if Annie could provide me with the list of what they're looking to purchase I can add photos of the items into the public forum slides. I'm just thinking for town meeting is, can we have some images? We, we are not an electronic town meeting and that would be Randy Iser's decision as the town uh, moderator. So we can't um, have I, a, a PowerPoint, not necessarily a PowerPoint, but just images projected of these things. As I think when we get to the water tank fences, that's something people are going to have a lot of questions about. So and the, 
I'm sorry, I didn't mean to cut you I off. I don't want to derail this whole thing. I guess it's just a request and we could always take it on well, offline. But. So, so we'll look into it. We'll come back to you and let you know what we can do. We'll give it to the old college try. Okay. And then I would be asking those department heads for in the, the image, supply the images for that, that presentation, so to speak. Okay. Thank you. Sorry to interrupt. No, that's good. And I actually, I forgot the water tank fences. So David, do you want to talk about that real quick before we vote? Yeah. So this is mandated by DEP in their inspection of the, uh, the, of the water and wastewater. Uh, they require fences in order to provide uh, security for those critical resources. There are two water tanks, uh, about 30,000 inch, and that comes up to 65,000. This would come out of water reserves. You've got 1.2 million in water reserves. So this would have no impact upon taxes or water rates. Okay. All right. So we have a motion and a second on Article uh, 13. Any further discussion? No. All right. All in favor? Aye. 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 All right. 500. Zero, zero. Ready then, I think. Um, number 14 is the last one for tonight. Uh, that is the change of the town election uh, starting in year 2022 to have it after the first, uh, after the annual town meeting. Say that again. Uh, the, this is a this is sponsored by the finance committee. Um, they've already taken a vote recommending this, and they are asking that we change the date of the annual election from before town meeting to after town meeting. Okay, so. Any, does the finance committee want to speak to this? Give us I, I can uh, speak to it if you'd like. Um, yeah. The theory of having it after um, the election, after the town meeting, many, many times during our town meeting, we've had to have debt exclusions or other items that would need a vote. So in some cases, we've had to have an election before town meeting, then we have town meeting, have to have another election after town meeting to do the debt exclusions and all those other things. And looking at all the other towns around in Massachusetts, the majority of the towns all have them after town meeting, or they would have them, some of the smaller ones have them at town meeting. Um, so it, this would actually help with some costs. Um, so we wouldn't have to have another election. You could just add it to the ballot if there is a debt exclusion. The other thing is we're working really hard on a budget here and everyone um, that has been working hard as far as the um, select board with us, you have an election right before the town meeting, then you're gonna, you know, that person didn't have any input on the budget and is and has to um, actually give the part of the budget. So that was my theory. I, I think this is a good idea. I mean, it does give you the option of if you're up for re-election on anything, especially on the select board going into town meeting, you know, it's not necessarily a new person going into town meeting. It's somebody that's bon been on the select board for a year um, and they can present on materials and you're not brand new coming into basically the biggest event of the year. And I even see that too for the moderator, at least the moderator would have um, almost a year to get up to speed if it's a new moderator, as opposed to two weeks to crunch together and uh, present at town meeting. So I think this is a good idea. And I can make a motion to approve it. Second. Second. All right. Any further discussion? All right, all in favor? Aye. 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 No. All right, three, two. 
I got I got kind of mixed feelings. Uh, you know, if you do your homework, you're you're ready to go at it when you run and and get in a seat. Uh, on the other hand, you're thrown in in two weeks to finalize the budget and and expect to know what you're talking about at town meeting. But no, I I, I just I don't think it's the right time right now. I don't, I don't either, John. I think that uh, most people, when they run for the seat, they're pretty much uh, aware of the things that have been going on. Uh, Jane, you certainly can attest to that. You, you've been following our budget right along for the last 18 months. Um, you know, so people that are interested in the uh, agenda certainly will make that effort to do that. But I don't see the point in changing it at this point. And there may not be a time when we have anything that we're going to take to the ballots after town meeting. So, you know, you're going to run an election, whether it's before or afterwards. So um, t trying to change things over and when we're actually going to have town meeting also. So, you know, I, I don't particularly um, care for this change at this point in time. Okay. What's next, David? Anything? All right, so the rest of the articles are either CPA or planning board. The select board typically does not recommend uh, for or against the CPA articles, but the finance committee does. Uh, I, I think I'm meeting with the finance committee sometime next week to go through all of that. Then we have these, the uh, fund balance transfer article, which we put on hold pending our discussion about the uh, budget, and then we have the two budget articles for general fund and enterprise fund. So the only thing left to do is assign responsibilities for speaking to each of the articles. All right. Let's go through the list. Um, David, you're going to do the consent agenda, right? So the first seven articles. That's me. Yeah. I'm right. happy to do that. And then how about the uh, finance committee for number eight or David, would you guys be willing to do that? General budget. Yep. yep. Okay. Uh, enterprise fund budget, David, that probably best, uh, you would be best to explain that. Yep. All right. And uh, number 10, we'll have the assessors speak to their legal fund. And number 11, okay. uh, revolving fund for council on aging. Uh, I'll speak to that. Okay, so Jane. 12, uh, transfer to stabilization. Uh, David, do you want to do that since it's your uh, defense in depth strategy? Defense but the number, in depth. The, number, the number is not 632, correct? Or what? What was the number for stabilization? I thought we just said before it was going to be 200 or what was ever going to be left over on free cash Whatever. was actually going to be the number that gets transferred to stabilization. How did we get 632? I think you're looking at an old document, Joyce. I show uh, 208 between. Uh, oh. but All right. I I didn't get the new document. I will adjust that and get one. Okay. I I know we didn't vote to recommend that one, so if you know we can we can assign someone to talk about it at least. I think. Okay. David, did you want to talk about that? Be happy to. Okay. Capital. Who would like to do that? I can do that um, one. Okay. Somebody else wants to. <laughs> no, that's. Christian. Yeah, that's fine. And uh, annual town election date. It's finance committee. They're the one that brought it forward. Okay. Sounds good. Is that okay with the finance committee? That would be fine. Okay. Uh, CPA, I guess we'll leave all those up to CPA to speak about. And the planning board can do theirs. Yep. That's it, I folks. And then I have nothing to talk about, so that's a good that's a good good town meeting for me. Me too. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So if we're all set, then let's David. Let's move on to uh, budget in the tri board meeting. 
So um, last night I met with the finance committee and they uh, they asked me to do a couple of things. First of all, they wanted me to take a second look at the uh, revenues, particularly having to do with ambulances. And so I have a little bit of data there. Um, the other thing that we wanted to do is we wanted to take a closer look at the savings and fuel prices that we received through the FERCOG bid. Uh, as well as looking at uh, other areas where I can save money in the departmental budgets. So uh, speaking about the revenues, we have a reduced number for the uh, ambulance. It's somewhere uh, in the neighborhood of 100,000. So that's a substantial hit to our revenue stream. Uh, we do have some options, however. Uh, one option would be to transfer money from existing capital projects in order to support the free cash um, situation and apply more free cash. But I th think a better way of looking at this would be to take a, um, uh, on, uh, a look at the CARES Act uh, passed by the federal government. Uh, Hadley has been allocated $471,000 for the CARES Act. There is a uh, there's a uh, act going through the Congress right now called the COVID-19 Flexibility Act, which would allow us to apply that $471,000. So what are you talking about on the $100,000? Um, are you talking about a shortfall there in the ambulance uh, contract? I think we might have lost David. Hello, hello. Ollie, Ollie, and free. I think we lost David. All right, we lost David. How about, let's go to the finance committee. You want to talk about what, what your thoughts are on this budget after your uh, meeting? Yeah, he, he didn't really say whether it was uh, revenue or expense, $100,000. He, I, 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 I'd jump in if you want. Um, yeah, what he described to us was that he was expecting a shortfall because the, the reports are that the ambulance service is not getting as many calls during COVID. The last couple of months, the number of runs that they're doing is down. So the number of the total revenue is gonna drop. We may not get, might not get into that share period this year if things continue like that. A lot of people have been skipping, you know, going to the hospital for various things. Um, and so we were wondering whether we should, rather than wait for a surprise, if we should anticipate a shortfall of the rebate this year, so that there's not a surprise later. Amy, is okay, that so that'll cover be, that? That'll be, that'll be on a revenue side then, right? Yeah. Well, yeah. We, had, we had received uh, $266,000 uh, from the ambulance, and evidently that had gone back into the revenue side, correct? Yep. So going back into the revenue side, if we're having a shortfall with the ambulance, wouldn't it have behooved us to not take in all that two sixty six? and put it into revenue to keep some out there in some, some type of an account so that just in case we do have a shortfall? So that money got uh, plowed into free cash ultimately. Um, so uh, what we're talking about is how we can apply uh, uh, money to make sure that the FY21 budget is going to work even with a projected shortfall in that ambulance uh, accounts. So uh, I was just summarizing the opportunities that the federal legislation, which lo looks like it may uh, actually happen, uh, to use utilize uh, $471,000 to apply to deficits for both 20 and 21. I, I think it'd be a good idea to plan on that deficit appearing and that we will have to pay into the ambulance this year rather than get a rebate uh, just to be on the safe side. And then if we can use some of that um, uh, federal money for you know, paying that bill, so be, you know, then great. But uh, in the meantime, I think we should budget on the conservative side based on everything else going on. Yeah. Yeah, I, I'm not- So I'm, not... I'm setting aside tomorrow afternoon. Go ahead. Did we lose you again? Uh, 
So as I said, I did meet with the finance committee. They asked me to look at the revenues. They also looked, asked me to look at the expenditures. So I've set aside tomorrow afternoon to go at it and um, redraft the budget so that we can address all the concerns that the finance committee uh, raised last night. I think I, I think we've raised concerns here with the select board tonight also about um, about revenues and uh, where we're going to allocate our money. So just to be clear to myself, David, this four hundred and seventy one thousand dollars that we haven't gotten yet, but we're anticipating receiving that amount of money. It's money that's been allocated to the town of Hadley through the CARES Act. Um, okay. We have a June, we have a June fifth deadline to apply for that money. Um, so I'm going to be working on making sure that application is ready for you for your June third meeting. Now that's cutting it short. Yeah, that's that's the that's the hand of cards that they gave us. Yeah, and that but that. Go ahead. Uh, that money could be used in the general budget for anything. It's not like a CDBG money. It's uh, related to uh, actual COVID-19 uh, 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 costs and estimated costs. So anything associated with uh, COVID-19. So and that would a, a so shortfall that would, would qualify. So that would be ambulance services that we could use it for? Emergency and management? If the Care Flex Act goes through, then we could use it to uh, address the um, the revenue shortfall. And, and, you could, and can we also use it for the Chromebooks and the other things for the schools? Um, I, conceivably, we could. That would be a good use for it, I think, since uh, a lot of this distance learning is a result of COVID. Yeah. Does it well, seem reasonable that we should have a short meeting just to approve this grant application so it's not going in at the last second we're, we're approving it I right now <laughs> i think we need, need to just say approve it take a vote right now and have david fill out the application and submit it and that's it's a done deal so then david nixon are you still there Yep. Okay. So then uh, let's do this then. If we could get a motion and a second to uh, allow that to happen, that would be great. So we don't have to meet and David could do this in advance of the June 3rd meeting. All right. So moved. Thank you. Absolutely. So moved. Second. All right. All those in favor. Aye. 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 I guess I, I was just going to say, could we have David, David Phil sign on the select board's behalf, but that's fine. <laughs> we can do it that way. That would be great. I, I'll second that motion, Christian. All right. All those in favor of that. Aye. 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 Okay. Um, so moving well, he's, you got to wait. He's got to wait for the grant anyway. So, but the application will be just ready to go as soon as, as soon as it comes out. Yep. Yep. Okay. Um, I, I just wanted to make one quick comment on the budget. I got, a, a lot of questions from people about uh, money coming, you know, which departments are losing out, which departments are gaining. Um, I, I, it seems to me that the finance committee has been trying very hard and, and tell me if I'm speaking out of turn here though, but to make cuts fairly evenly and across the board as far as where we can save some money and, and come up with a balanced budget that's going to work. Um, my thoughts are that, you know, everyone kind of suffers the same pain and no department is penalized more than the other as far as, you know, wish lists and, and nice to haves and things like that. Uh, we're not taking money from, say, you know, fire to give to, uh, I don't know, police or the other way around. Uh, everybody's in, or at least that we shouldn't be, everybody should be sacrificing evenly uh, when it comes to this budget. So that, that's my thought. Uh, I've got a lot of questions from people in town that are wondering how we're deciding, you know, what, what department's getting raises or increases. Um, it doesn't seem like any are really getting raises or increases. So maybe the, the finance committee can talk about that a little bit to kind of allay some of those rumors and fears there. 
I can go ahead and um, go over a few points on what we discussed about, and, and a lot of it had to do with that last night. Um, I'll, I'll just make uh, go through a, a couple quick things um, about our discussion last night. Then, and then I would like to have all the finance committee um, just have a you know, so they have their views out there too for the select board. Um, one of the things we would like to see in the select board to discuss, we would like to say that there's a hiring freeze and you're not going to do additional hours. So say, just so that you could say that, so that, you know, we're not doing new new hires and we're not gonna give additional hours at this time. Um, so that's something we would like to see the select board discuss. Um, also, you know, this is an enormous task, this budget. David's done this and I, and I apologize for all the times that I'm driving him crazy because he's gonna have to go over this and over this and over this again. Um, but it is a big task and he's, he's trying to balance it and he's getting it balanced. But, you know, there's so many un un unknowns out there. Uh, the, the revenues, um, I don't, we didn't, the only thing that we really had to discuss and that was really the, um, the ambulance. But other than that, I mean, all his recommendations I can uh, agree with, you know, from what we can guess on. We don't really know. As far as the expenses, the employees are your biggest expense, obviously. So there's a lot of talk because those are the major items in all, all, the, um, all the departments. Um, so yes, we wanna lower the cost, that's true. And so we're looking at not doing the raises and things like that. And we talked about the 2% COLA, okay? But even more important than so even just saving the money is fairness. I, I mean, I've talked to other um, people in um, that work for the town and it, and it is fairness too. Uh, so it, it's kind of hard to say, you know, I'm sorry that you're not going to get your step increase this year. We're going to put that step increase off. You're not going to, there's not, there's no merit in um, raises. Everybody's getting 2%. So, and, and, and you can see that the budget has been adjusted for that 2% COLA. But then you also, because everybody can see the budget and you see the line items and you see the, a bunch of them over. You see this one, this line item might be 4.64%. This line item's 10% over this line. And there's reasons for many of those things too. Um, I understand that. But a lot of it is when we talk is contracts. A lot of it is union. And so they're unions in their contracts. And yeah, we can't do a whole lot with that. So because there are unions and contracts, but it's really disheartening and it's, it's, it's tough to say to those employees that aren't union and contracts, you have to do this and you, you can't have your step, but um, there's nothing we can do about the other. So we can only take away from it. So it, it's, it's one of those things, it would be nice to see it across the board because it's one of those things you could say, we're all in this, you see, hear that term over and over and over again, we're all in this together. You know, it'd be nice if it was all the same. Um, so that's the only thing I had to say about that. I wanted the, you know, really the town administrator, the HR and the select board, you know, if 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 there's anything they can do about that to make it closer and more fair, that's that would be great. If it's not, you know, we're going to go, we're going to move right along. So that we're done. You know, that's just the thing we had to say about that. Um, as far as just uh, to hit on a couple of items, um, like the uh, police, uh, we noticed, you know, in there, I do want to point out, it is not, I did get that, on, I understand that it is not an increase for police. Theirs is an adjustment, adjustment. and it's an adjustment based on we had them at the wrong level. And, and I get that, so I don't think th that is something to be noted, and we have to note that 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 is completely fair, that they deserve it, and we need to keep our police officers, so they need to be at the right level. It is not an increase, but an adjustment to make them at the right level, so I understand that. Um, the fire, I wanted to point out, in case we could make an adjustment on that, um, I did notice that we are, you know, just to make sure it's playing fair, I'd like you to look at, and, and if it is something we can do, you know, the fire chief does is at zero. We're giving everybody else on the whole 
town a, a percentage of an increase. So if we can increase the fire chief to at least the 2% so that he's not at zero, that would be great because I don't want to leave one person out. Um, the, as far as the rest of the staff in the fire, they were lower at zero, but that had to do with a staff change. So that's fine that, that they are getting, I confirm that they are getting their increase of the 2%. Um, the highway salary, um, at, at the uh, highway administrative salaries, I think that's over, but I only think it's over because of staff increases. I mean, not staff increases, I'm sorry. I think it might be over just because of um, a change of change, again, change of staff. So it wasn't a lot, but I think that that might be in that line item. I did go back and listen to when we did talk to Chris before and listen to um, what he had to say about his salary line items. There are some salary line items in there on his that we were he was looking for three part-time custodial help. So his big increase there was three part-time custodial help. Um, at this time, I don't think that we should hire additional people, but that's what that's for. It wasn't raises, it was additional people. I also think if I'm remembering correctly, um, the communication was increased, but I think they're also looking for extra hours, not necessarily staffing extra people, but extra hours. Um, and that's still in there. So those are the a couple things on that. Um, I do want, um, since David's on here, I, I pointed out we double we have to double check our heating expenses to make sure we are accounting for our propane and our oil on uh, several of the properties. Um, we need to check on our custodial to make sure because I think that got pulled out, and that's quite a bit. That was like about forty seven thousand dollars that we wanna make sure that it's in there somewhere. We move a lot of things around. It's hard to follow sometimes what bucket it's in. I know that they got fire stuff got moved out, but it got moved back in, into the right spot, but I don't see where the custodial got moved. It got pulled, but I don't see it back in. So that might be 47,000 we have to come up with. Um, one thing I did ask that we can look at is the tree maintenance uh, in the highway. Can we put that off a year? Um, maybe we can, uh, can we lower it down? It's 40,000. Can we lower it down to 10? Can we even just lower that, that whole line item down to zero? Maybe it would be great to lower that line item just, and maybe we put it into the finance, um, reserves. And if we had, if, if it's not as bad as we think it might be, then we can give it back in if they need the, or if there's an emergency, we definitely need to take care of it if it's an emergency. So, um, but if it's not, and, and we can put it off a year, let's put it off a year. Um, I think that would be great. Uh, liability insurance. I hadn't had a chance to uh, mention this because our meeting got cut short yesterday. I think it, it might be good and we could save a bunch of money if we removed maybe the Russell School off our liability insurance. If we could also remove the um, French Street property and if we're insuring also, if they were insuring North Hadley Hall, remove those all off our liability insurance, that would be good. I think we could save, I'm not sure if it's maybe 7,000, uh, quite a bit of money there, I'm hoping to save on that. Um, I'm also- uh, Amy? Yes. Amy, weren't we looking to sell that French Street property? Yes, but I think there's, I think there's insurance on, we're carrying insurance on it right now. Okay. And, it, and if, it's, if it falls over or, you know, just, you know, a tree falls on it. Who cares? Yeah. Right. But what if somebody gets hurt in it and we don't have liability insurance? That's a mistake. If somebody trespasses, we're still responsible for the liability issue. I would check on that. I think it might be that fall under something else. I don't necessarily know if you have to have it on the property. Yeah. I think the town has a general umbrella liability policy, but we'll have to check. Actually, I, 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 I if I can I just, just hop in here, um, it, it's Sue Glowatsky. I was in insurance, municipal insurance for years. Uh, if you list it on your liability schedule for properties that you own, then it's covered. But you don't need to cover it for property insurance. Just for liability. Just right. for liability only. So okay. then a good, good opportunity for savings, it sounds like. 
But if somebody if somebody burns down the North Hadley Hall, is it covered when you take it off liability? So? Um, it well, it wouldn't be covered for property. Yeah, yeah. that's what but I'm afraid of. Yeah, God, I'm not gonna. <laughs> twice, I would expect you to burn it down first. <laughs> that's why she was asking. <laughs> well, I'm saying the like if it, was, story if, it was hit, if it was hit by lightning and and burned, would it be covered? It wouldn't be covered for property. Yeah. yeah. But like French Street, um, I, I think that policy, it, it's with Lloyd's of London. So it's a surplus lines company. Yeah. So it, it costs us like over $1,700 a year to insure. Mm. That's, that's crazy. The, uh, the owner abandoned the property. So we well, should insure it we for should property. Sell it. Yeah, put it up for sale. Get it and, get it going. And my understanding from David is that it's supposed to sell August 2nd, but with uh, a surplus lines company, what they do is they short rate um they short rate cancel a policy. So we would probably pay almost 40 to 50% of that. Mm -hmm. So that should come off. Mhm. Mm Linda, did you have something or was it just uh, there is an advantage to waiting a full year from when it was taken? Um, so we are waiting that year and we have uh, we are planning to have that property auctioned off and it should be in August. August. Okay, thank you, Linda. It's underway, yeah, underway, yay, There's right? No and, <laughs> and you don't have to, you don't have to auction the property within the year, but you certainly don't need to insure it for property coverage. Okay. For fi because it's a fire only policy. Yeah. Okay. If it burns Good down, whoever buys it would be happy. Good. <laughs> we'll see. <laughs> so back, back to that's why it's going to auction. <laughs> that, that's the buyer's, uh, buyer's choice. By his delight. Amy yes. and finance. Any further comments before the rest of the finance committee um, chimes uh, in? Only two other comments that I would make is if we uh, only to talk about a little bit on the Council on Aging, the grant, and see if that was something I, we started that last night um, to see if that's something we can push off for one year. Um, it's a great grant and it's awesome. Um, I just don't know if it's something we can push off for one year. So I, I think that should be talked about. Um, and the uh, 25,000 to the unemployment in that on the warrant, it is something to look at. What if, you know, do you really need it in the unemployment bucket? If you put it to the, once it's in there, it doesn't come out, but say you don't need it in unemployment, say you didn't need it. If you would just left that in the finance reserve and you need it, move it. But if you don't need it, then you could use it for something else. So that was my that was on that one. Um, but that's all I have um, on my list of points to make. Anybody else from finance? Uh, I'm in full agreement with what she just said. I do have a question. One of the things she said is, I think it's semantics question. She said, no new hires. Does that really mean no new position? So if someone is hired and they are no longer able to work, that position is not filled or that position that already exists is filled, but we don't make new positions. I would say no new position. The one that you have that's currently, you would refill, that would already be budgeted. Okay, that was-, that in was budget. So in, in our talking points, you had said, no new hires, but we need to change that to no new positions. Yes, that's correct. Okay. The other thing you had said that I'm concerned about is the building maintenance for the new buildings. We do not want to start off with three new buildings and let them go downhill fast. We have to have some way to maintain those. And that means somebody's got to come in. The staff is not either trained nor should be spending their time cleaning toilets and emptying trash. Oh, I agree. I think that we that that we have to look at that because I think it's pulled out by mistake and I don't at least I didn't see it. I saw it pulled out and I think we need to put it back in. So I'm just bringing this up to your attention that even though we're talking about saving money and elsewhere, we might have to come up with another 47 put it back in. 
because you know how we change the bucket sometimes. I just don't can't find the bucket that it went to. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. All right, David, is that? Oh, sorry. Uh, no, go ahead, Paul. Uh, just David. David's pulling together our questions from the other day. Is that in his list, David? Nixon. Yep. Yeah. Yep. So we'll find that out in a day or two, right? Yep. All right. I thank you. Were we, were we going to go out to bid on the uh, upkeep of the buildings? I know that the buildings will come under the purview of the DPW and the uh, maintenance committee that we, uh, ma maintenance person that we have uh, for the DPW. But as for cleaning and things, are, there, are we all going to just have a bid on all the town buildings? Are we still going to go with that? Well, that, that's what I was going to say. I don't think that we can afford to hire new staff under the DPW to clean the buildings. So I think even if we were to do a, a short term, you know, year contract or something to get us through this mess, I think that would probably be a better option. What is a finance committee? I mean, what are your thoughts about how to handle that? I would agree with that, but what are they saying? I, I would agree with that, with, with doing it how you've been doing it. That's what we were looking at. There, there is the three part-time um, um, our, our three part-time people listed in the um, highway department. They were, they were looking to, they had talked about how they wanted to do it last year, and then they were hoping to do it this year. I, I just think we need to push it off one more year and keep doing it the way we're doing it. So we're going to hire a concern to take care of our buildings right now at this point. Yeah. So we should go out to bid since it probably will be over 10. Do you think that might happen for all the buildings? I David, on, pro on procurement, David, is that how we would have to do it? Yeah. Yep. Uh, it would definitely be more than $10,000. So we'd need to uh, develop it at a minimum of contract. Okay. Um, do we need a vote on that, David, Phil? Yeah, we, we can, uh, why don't we, if I could get a motion as far concerning um, janitorial upkeep of all town buildings, that'd be great. Well, I'll make a motion that we go out to bid for a con uh, janitorial contract with somebody. Are we going to do it for a year just to keep this in place until we see what's happened? Um, so for a year, we would like yep. to do a year contract with someone. All right. I'll second that, and okay. I we have discussion now. Okay, yeah, go that ahead. That would be, I think that the somebody who's in charge of each building, the new buildings, it's fairly easy, the librarian, the senior service director, town hall. We need to have someone from each of those sit down as a group and make up the job description for this person. Because when we were in the hooker school, we had someone who was not, able to do the things that we currently will need in our new building this is not a this is not a person this is a company we that still I just need made, that i just made a motion on it'll be a company for the first year to make sure that all the buildings have an upkeep and are kept clean for the year until we find out how we can do this through the dpw if they're going to continue that process or are we going to continue it through uh, hiring of an outside janitorial firm. That's fine, but I still would like to be very specific about the kinds of things that we expect to be done. Yeah, like I agree with you, Jane, our minimal demands of what's needed for each and every one of the buildings. So you want to review the scope of work. I can work with you on that. Okay, thank you. Any further discussion? Was there a second? Uh, Jane. I seconded it. Okay. All right. All in favor? Aye. 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 No. Christian was, was a no. I was a no. Okay. Did you have something you were concerned about, Christian? I, I just think we should hire somebody to do it. I think it's a better long-term strategy, and I just that's think what, that, that's what we're doing for for a year. Oh no! I just think we should hire somebody internally to do it, and and oh. it's a better long-term strategy than hiring an outside firm to do it. I just feel like we haven't had. Well, you know, it's been okay, our experience with outside people, but I just think it's a big job and I think it's going to be expensive and we'd be better off doing it inside. But oh, I, I agree with that also in the long term, but I certainly don't think that one person can take care of all the buildings. Yeah, and I'm just confused about 
yeah, I guess this is more of a broader dis a question is, do we have a number that we're trying to achieve with all these cuts? It just seems like we're mentioning a lot of cuts and I don't know if we're just cutting and cutting and cutting without a goal or if we have a particular number we're trying to hit. I, I just don't understand that. Well, you give us our revenue loss number and we'll give you a number. How's that? Uh, some of it, it wasn't just cuts. They were, I, I, I actually in, in here mentioned more things that we had to add on, uh, such as the custodial and the heating and, and some of the other stuff. So actually there was a lot of add-ons. I think it just needs to be, you know, really accurate because we are going to be hit with so many surprises. So, um, okay. so, so to Christian's question, has somebody done the comparison of hiring in-house versus hiring a company who's going to take a profit off of it? So can we see those numbers about whether if, if we cost, if we hire Susie Smith full-time as opposed to hiring the ABC cleaning company, what is the difference in how much we're paying? Uh, Jane, the biggest difference is going to come from your benefits. Tack on about 25% to that salary, and then you have your cost for benefits. And how much does a company take in profit? I couldn't tell Having you Having run a cleaning company, they take a lot. What was our last cleaning company, uh, David Nixon? How much did we pay them to, to uh, clean? Yeah, so I don't have that number off the top of my head, but in general, if you have a contractor do it, then um, you've got to pay the profit. But if you do hire somebody, then you basically own them for life and all the benefits. And, and I would add more. To yeah. yeah, so. Mm -hmm. I, I think that, uh, like Christian said, hiring somebody a town employee eventually to do this, or probably it would have to be more than one employee in order to clean all the town buildings and keep up with it is probably the way to go. I just don't know that we have the money or the kind of the bandwidth to handle that this time around. So that that's why I said for the, for the contract, but. Yeah. And I'm not trying to derail this year. I, I I'm fine with us going with a service. I just would rather not vote for it. That's all. So, uh, yeah. you know, I just want you to know what your theory was. <laughs> Yeah, 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 yeah. And I just, I yeah. feel like more like in favor of spending a little bit now to save in the long run. And we're, but that's contrary to us wanting to save money now and spend less in the long run. So it's kind of like just a philosophy difference and it's fine. I, I think what we're doing yeah. is, is okay. I'm not, I'm not trying to put up a big stink about it or anything. No, no. I, I, I just wanted to know what you were thinking. That's all. Yeah. yeah Thank yeah. you. I just don't want to take too long going back and forth. That's all. Uh, that's so the, fine. The rough math on a two-person crew is about eighty thousand dollars worth benefits. That's at okay. fifteen. That's at fifteen dollars an hour for forty hours a week. Okay. All right. So um, that's good. That's good to know too, Ed. Thank you. Uh, Valerie, Alexi, um, Dylan. Anybody else want to chime in real quick before we move on? Well, now at least you got something to compare to when you get the quotes in from the services. And that's plus the 25%, Ed? Sorry, I was on mute. Yes. Yeah, to you, David. Uh, I agree with what Amy said earlier. Just want to thank her and David as well for all the hard work and leadership as like Paul and I are new to finance this year, and it's been a heck of a year to get thrown into the finance committee. Um, but yeah, we appreciate all the town employees, uh, wanted to make clear that the police is, a, a adjustment and not, uh, anything more, um, than COLA across the board. We've been trying to make cuts to nice tabs, um, but there's just a lot of stuff that we don't know yet. So trying to be prepared and trying to be diligent and that's where we are. Um, but we did hear some good news about the fuel savings and the band bid results. Um, so that was positive news that we heard the other day from David Nixon. That's good. Well, we want to, we want to thank you new guys for jumping in and being a part of the finance committee. Cause it's not always easy jumping on the tail end and getting into the hot and heavy of it, but thank you very much for participating. I appreciate it for sure. Thank you. Absolutely. 
we always thought finance would be boring. Can't be boring when you're in the middle of a pandemic. <laughs> <laughs> Not in Hadley. <laughs> Alexi, you want to say something? Uh, no, I just echo everybody else. I'm in full agreement and support. And thank you, Amy, for your diligence. Thank you also. Thanks. Okay. And all right. So, well, let's talk real quick about the, the hiring um, new position freeze and increased hours. Um, is that something we want to talk about? I mean, the finance committee t spoke about it. To me, it makes sense uh, as far as trying to come up with a budget, uh, you know, what, what does everybody think? Increased hours, shows, increased hours for who? Increased hours for who? No, uh, I think what they're saying is that we make it our policy that we will not increase any hours for this com coming budget. I don't know that it's been proposed, but I just think that we, it, they're asking us to take that stance that we won't create any new positions or increase hours. I, I think any company right now, and, and coming from one, because Partners is very, very much a large corporate business, even though it's a hospital, it's minute to minute. So that's what they're looking at right now, because they're going to be in quite a deficit by the time this COVID thing is uh, over with. But as we get into the year, there are some things that you cannot control. And that would be the highway department when there are emergencies. So you have to look at that. Um, you have to look at if there's any breaks in water, sewer. Um, then in this coming year, you're going to be looking at the winter. We don't know what that's going to bring. So, yes, we would like to stay minute to minute. But there are going to be instances where you, can, you have no control. So I think we have to be prepared for those parts of uh, things of uh, unnatural things that happen. So, uh, you know, well, and, and I don't think finance is recommending as far as not allowing overtime for emergencies and things like that. I think they just mean budgeting for, you know, somebody has, you know, 38 hours to bump them up to 40 for, for this year or something along those lines. But maybe. No, I, I agree. I agree with that. Also, everything stays status quo at this point uh, unless there is an emergency. And Jane, you had something as well? Well, just I, I agree with that, that no hour increases and no new positions. Yeah. If, if somebody quits or retires out or something like that, and they're mandated by DEP or the state, then those positions will have to be rehired, which will probably be rehired at a lower rate, whether it be water, sewer, whatever licenses held by the person retiring or quit, you know? Correct. I agree with that, John. Make like to make a motion to that effect. I will make a motion that we uh, stay status quo at this point, unless there is a position that needs to be refilled at that time, depending on the department and that we work as minute to minute that, uh, that you will work your hours and not be paid for any, any more unless it's an emergency. Mr. Chairman, okay. Mr. Chairman, before the board takes a vote, do you mind if I just remind the board, in the case of public works, we don't have a mechanic at this time. Uh, I don't know if the board wants to put a freeze on that, but that will affect all we do. Yeah, but that, that's a position that's already been created and, and funded in the past, and just, I, I think they can... Maybe Ed can correct me if I'm wrong, but uh, the position's yeah. already funded, even though no one's in it right now. So I think we, we need to find somebody for that position. So yes, we're we're working on it. <laughs> um, that's, that's a def, that's a different beast. Do we have to have people in certain positions, and that yeah. one's important? Correct, Ed. Yeah. So all of all of the positions that you see advertised are currently funded. Okay. Still, I'll just second I, the motion real quick. I'll just second it, just because we can discuss. But just to second it. Thanks, Christian. <laughs> Any further discussion? All right. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. All right. So uh, do we want to talk any more about budget? Do we want to move on? Any further comments from anybody? I, I know uh, Chief Mason's here and uh, Chris Okafer and, and some other department heads. So any comments before we move on? Yes, Mr. Chairman, I, I just uh, I have a comment. 
I know that the board wants to go out for one year for the cost for the custodial staff. Our recommendation to the board was a three part-time custodial staff, no benefits. Uh, in the course of the board approving that we should go out, um, would the board authorize us because the thinking is not to let clean the building, but they also these are three additional buildings that we require even in this even in, in winter months maintenance and also landscaping. So these are the things that apart from and then with the COVID nineteen era, the cleaning is not done as in the past where we just come in and dust especially in council on aging where we have elderly people and the place is open for most of the day we'll, we'll do more than once or twice cleaning and disinfectant so i don't know if i just want to let the board know this because this will reflect on the contractor's price also no that's a, that's a good point I, I think with the scope of work will definitely have to be tailored to the new reality that we're in as far as you know COVID 19. So. Exactly. That's what I was saying. You know, I, I'd rather get a service in there right now and have them be totally responsible for that at this point, instead of training one, two or three of our own employees part time that might not be able to do the job correctly and then see what the cost is at that point. And then we can transfer back over at some point in a year or two and hire one or two people. Do we currently have somebody working part-time doing the cleaning? And what kind of an arrangement through a company individual? Uh, it's all contract, I believe, right yes, now. We have, yes, we have a, a contract. We have a contractor who is cleaning. But uh, the, the town hall, the safety plan, safety complex, and, is, and also the library. How how much is that service costing us right now this year? The the individual who we used to have before COVID nineteen era was uh, four hundred dollars monthly, but she wasn't able to handle uh, the required cleaning. So we just had this new contractor who just took over. We are still waiting for them to supply their W nine for us an emergency until uh, we wait for the select board to tell us what to do, either to go out for a bit or to hire within. Now that the board has approved, we're going out. I will assume that David Nixon will be discussing with me or maybe coming up with some, based on the board's criteria, how to, so we can quickly go out for a bit. Right now we have an emergency situation. Yeah, and a lot of that cleaning has been supplemented by the fire chief and his guys as well, and um, going around and, and misting with the um, what the sanitizing chemicals that they're using. Uh, yes. So, you know, we could definitely use somebody to, that with those capabilities. Mm -hmm. um, Dr. McKenzie, you had something? Yeah, I just, before you move off the budget, and you had talked about uh, the CARES Act grants, so school departments are also going to be receiving CARES Act funding. We haven't made a determination about what that will be. It will look somewhat, it'll be similar to what our Title I for reading funding is. So let's say roughly around $48,000. And the reason we haven't immediately said, oh, we're going we're gonna to use it for this is what you all are talking about, which is um, things keep changing. So last night, the CDC issued guidance about uh, when students when it's determined that students will go back to school, they're recommending now that there's no more than one child on a bus seat and you skip a row. So now they've just um, cut the capacity of transportation in half. Um, that's an example of a recommendation coming out. We don't know what return looks like and we don't know the fiscal implications yet. Um, but it's also, I just wanted you all aware that there is there's CARES funding and. And I anticipate, although it hasn't, it hasn't really been talked about yet, I anticipate if, if the federal government can sort this out, that we may see something that looked a lot like ARA funding back in 2008. Um, that's what I was referring to when I said, if more funding comes in, whether it's a capital request or something else, I've already talked to uh, David about making adjustments on the school side 
Um, and in this case, we do know that some of this money is coming, but we also have these major unknowns of the example I just gave you. If I have no way how I'm gonna sort that out of putting only one child every other row in a bus. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Chief Mason, anything? Uh, yeah, I just had more of a, a quick comment and then a question. So first of all, I want to thank the Finance Committee um, for our, everything that you've been doing, especially uh, at your meeting yesterday. Um, thank you for recognizing what you know what's going on with both of my budgets. Um, and I know the Fire Chief appreciates it well. He was on here, but then I, I heard him on the radio a second ago. So, um, But I just wanted to ask quickly, I know we're still kind of developing the parameters for what we're looking at and all the numbers aren't in. Is there going to be an opportunity um, for us to get a look at um, you know, some of the facts and figures that you're going to be submitting for kind of final approval. So we have a chance to maybe meet and discuss those items or, um, how's that going to work? Do we have that plan in place yet? I, I think what we said last meeting and we can, if, if Jane has any thoughts to add to this, but we were going to have department heads come before us after we had a, you know, semi-final draft of the budget and kind of plead their case for any cuts that needed to be reinstated or anything that was left out. Okay. And if anybody has any comments on that, they can. No. That sounds right. Um, right before you leave, um, since you do have a lot of departments here too, if you don't mind um, t talking maybe a little bit the highway tree maintenance uh, budget line item and the grant for the Council on Aging. Okay. Uh, anything else, Chief Mason, before we move on? Okay. Um, Haley, uh, I see you're waiting. You want to talk, <laughs> talk about um, on Aging or the grant? I'd like to update you about the grant and a, a recent development today. I was able to speak with Paul Burns, who's the Director of Transit at the Pioneer Valley um, transit authority and they can renegotiate the terms of the grant and give us enough money to help support us at a 50% matching rate for a three day a week program instead of the expanded five day a week program that was proposed in my originally proposed budget. So we can, with their approval, um, I mean, I, we can resubmit the agreement with edited numbers and change the original van um, driver salary figure um, to under $10,000, which will be in line. It'll, it'll cut a little bit more off our budget than the original cut that was um, floated last night. So we're able to do that and maintain the grant. Okay, so something to talk about with uh, finance, maybe that'll make uh, be some help. So thank you for that. Sure. And any, uh, anything else? Okay. Uh, did I miss anybody? Anybody else want to department heads about Dan or uh, Linda? Susan. I have a question for Linda. I don't know if she's there um, on something. Hi. There she is. So, <laughs> so my question has to do with the debt section of the budget and just that we went on the short term interest. Mm -hmm we went up like a hundred thousand dollars on interest, but I thought we were borrowing at like less than 1%. So I'm just wondering, I'm not, I don't know what you mean by going up a hundred thousand. Um, so we went, yeah, is, are you sure that's not short term uh, principle? Sure. It says interest short term notes outside. This is on section 710, 750. Um, it went from six, that part. Uh, 63,000. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm getting there. Yeah, getting there. Hold on. Okay, yeah. It's way at the, the end of my spreadsheet. End of the budget. <laughs> <laughs> I'm clicking, 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 clicking. Okay, sevens. All right, getting there. All righty. You got Scott. it. It's that right, line so 13. 
So what are you looking for? Short term notes, interest. It says interest, short term notes outside. Are you, sure print, are you sure that's not principal? Are you sure that's not principal? It's principal is up above. Seven tens are um, principal. Seven fifties are interest. So um, it doesn't look to me like this translated well because I see some principal now. Okay, so, um, but if you're saying something, uh, interest went up by 100,000, I know it's not correct. So we will have to study this again. Our interest based on the bands that we just got today, our interest should actually be down what it is before uh, from before because we got good rates on the bands that got bid. So yeah, I was going to ask the question if there's any chance of refinancing any of this this debt right now to reduce reduce okay. the interest. Is basically it's going to be my question, and I saw that one that was okay. So the only thing that could be refinanced are the are the items that say long term because those are those are bonds. The short term are the bands, and each of them goes yeah. for a year or less. So that's that. Yeah. Uh, the long term, um, we actually have David Eisenthal is looking at that right now okay. so we have talked about that uh whether that's worth uh refinancing at that point at this point going forward we have our so, next mm -hmm. no go ahead linda i didn't mean no, to no, interrupt. I, it, I mean he is we just talked it wasn't that our discussion last week with him uh, uh david is that he said let's take a look at that and see if we could do something with um with our long term but our long term is really dwindling out so <laughs> You know, with the benefit of it is uncertain. Um, okay. our, I was just our, looking our, for an option to save like a hundred thousand dollars if we could an interest there somehow by refinancing. So that that that's can, kind of where the source of my question. Can, can I can I interrupt for just a moment, uh, Christian? Because I'm I'm absolutely convinced you're mixing up principal and interest here. It's a hundred thousand dollar interest an increase in um, principal because we're paying down principal to make room for right. uh, borrowing with the quality for next year. There's an injection of 100,000 of free cash into paying down- principal. Within the levy. Within the levy. Principal within, within the levy. It was the point of the extra 100,000. Okay. Is that is that what we're talking about? I, I, I see that, but then if I go down four lines, that says principal, I go down four lines and it's interest. It goes from 63,000 to 168,000. But we don't have to go through it right now. We can do it some other time. I just I just saw that. So hey, let know. us take a look at that yeah, and yeah, make, yeah, sure that at it, it. Yeah. make sure that it got written up correctly. But the point okay. of adding the extra $100,000 to the payments within the levy was exactly to apply it to additional principal to make room in future years for, um, as in the next two years, even to uh, allow for more borrowing within the levy, such as we're doing with the emergency generators and the school IT, so that we don't need to go out to um, ballot elections and debt exclusion payments for items that we know that the town needs, especially when the town is being um, careful in now and, and cutting back on the principal, um, on the capital items that it is requesting. So that when, when we borrow within the levy, we can vote it at town meeting and it's done, one, one and done. And we don't have to go out to bail uh, questions. So perhaps it got written up wrong, Christian, and um, we, uh, I'll, David and I will work on this in the morning then and see yeah. that he's got sometimes things they just get into the wrong line what we vote at town meeting is is uh, fewer lines than when you see in your itemized version so um, perhaps we flip-flopped it so we'll take a look at that tomorrow but the point was to add a hundred that and this is at actually at the request of the finance committee um, in consultation with our discussions that another hundred thousand be added to the budget in order to pay down more on the within the levy borrowing so that we would allow more room for additional borrowing and additional additional capital items because we know the town's probably not going to uh, approve debt override the debt exclusion overrides in the next year or so okay. all right so before we move off this budget um 
last thing, let's talk about the tree line item before we move on. Uh, Chris, we've got a, a lot of money in that line item. Um, how much can we reduce it by so we can give the finance company something to work with? I know it's something we've been putting off, but unfortunately it might be something we have to put off further. So, Mr. Chairman, 40000 for tree management in Hadley is uh, a drop in the bucket. So it'd be difficult because, for example, we bring in a, a tree a buck a vendor. We go by the uh, price which we are given from by uh, uh, Fracog, the so Franklin uh, Regional Government, and uh, minimum to twenty five hundred is spent uh, to bring down it, uh, it one tree, and we're very careful in only trees that create hazard is what I've been bringing, I've been taking down as opposed to tree management because we don't have the money. Uh, so we also have to pay for detail in that same process. So you find that um, 40,000 doesn't take us that far. Uh, many, way, I have a lot of requests to take down trees or to even prune trees. I've not been able to do that because of that cost. So the only thing I would recommend Mr. Chairman is I will leave it to the board, whatever the board gives us. But the thing is, if you also remember, we don't know how the hurricane season will look like. Uh, we, are, we don't know what is ahead. That would be an emergency expense in terms of uh, if we need to take care of it. Uh, so if we were to reduce this line item, well, let's, let's just, I'll use the 10,000 that I think Amy mentioned earlier in the, in the evening. Um, and we did have a storm come through and knock down a bunch of trees, or we had a bunch of dead trees that need to be taken down for liability reasons, something along yeah. those lines. Yeah. Um, David, what's our typical process for paying for that if there's no money? Does it come out of the DPW operating budget? Who, who, how, how does that bill get paid? Yeah, it comes out of, comes out of the, the operational budget, and then we backfill it with, um, with a reserve fund transfer. Yeah. At the, end, at the end of the year, David, usually we have all those reserve fund transfers for um, uh, spending more than was on a line item itself, whether it's in within the budget or it needs to be transferred after out of free cash or stabilization. Right, Joyce? Yep, exactly. Okay. So then if we did have some sort of emergency or a tree that was a liability, we could cover it and then backfill later. But, uh, you know, for now, uh, could we cut that down to 10,000? Would that be helpful to the finance committee to, you know, make some progress toward a, the budget they need? Every little bit is helpful, but um, I think that if they need it, and and our and the finance reserve is going to be higher because we're going to expect some unexpected things it just gets transferred so if there's an emergency they're going to it's going to be covered anyways so I, I i think that if the more we can save and 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 have there for emergencies the better we are any any thoughts on that chris is that something that is doable as long as we backfill your operating budget at the end of the year? It's doable, Mr. Chairman. Even if we are right, the town administrator will understand why we are right. Okay. All right. So Chris and I have an appointment to meet tomorrow to go over his budget. Uh, we'll, we'll work out the details and we'll be back in touch with you. Okay, thanks. Thanks, Chris, and thanks, David. Um, all right, so we'll move on to the one twelfth budget now. David, do you want to talk about this a little bit? Yeah, so um, every town needs to pass a budget by uh, July 1st. Um, if we don't, then we have no money for anybody or anything. Um, given that uh, the town meeting is happening on June 18th, I'm sure we're going to make quorum i'm sure we're going to get the uh the get votes taken whether they're votes of approval or votes of denial i'll leave that up to the uh the voters to decide for themselves but let's say that for some reason we can't hold a town meeting prior to june 30th there's not enough people there we don't make quorum there's for some for whatever reason 
Um, this year, the Department of Revenue allows us to submit a 112th budget so that we have at least something to go on uh, for July. And that way we can put things back together and hold a town meeting and hold a vote. If we can't do that in July, then there's a provision to go to August. Uh, the departments have very uh, care, very helpfully put together what they need for a 112th budget. Uh, the bottom line that, uh, that you have is a little different from the information that I have developed this afternoon. Uh, it's about a $4 million budget for the month of July. Why so high? Uh, because we have a lot of one-time payments that are due right off the bat. The whole pension assessment for $1.4 million is due on July 1st. There's a there's debt service that's uh, due in July as well. Um, what I need to do is I need to submit this through Gateway to the Division of Local Services so that they can approve it. Um, I would like to do that tomorrow because I want to avoid the end of the year train wreck that will inevitably happen with all the towns waking up and deciding to submit 112 budgets at the last minute. Um, if you take a look at the $4 million uh, uh, line and you multiply that by 12, it comes up with a number that's larger than your budget. That's because in subsequent months, we will be using different um, numbers in order to get us to the budgetary amount. Uh, if we have to go the full 12 months, which I, surely hope that we do not have to do. So just so that we have a backstop and just in case the worst happens, I ask permission to submit a 112th budget to the Division of Local Services. So moved. Second. All right, any further discussion? What is it? It's based on last year's budget, David, or? Based upon right now, uh, our, our, F, our projected budget for FY21. Okay, all in favor. Aye. 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 All right, five zero. All Thank right. you very much. I'll get this done and that way it'll be behind us. Okay. Um, preparations for annual town meeting to be held at Hopkins Academy on June 18th. I know that the uh, fire chief has been working diligently on measuring the width of people and the space between them. So I think we've got the, how many people we can fit into the gym and the cafeteria down to a science, but David, would you like to talk a little bit about that? All right, so we're meeting with Unified Command uh, and the moderator in order to, and the Board of Health in order to come up with a safe way to, for us to hold town meeting. We had this past Saturday, the annual elections. I think that was a big success uh, and it operated very smoothly and efficiently. Um, I checked it out on Saturday morning. Everybody seemed to be uh, observing the requirements for not passing along any dis infectious diseases. Everybody seemed to be uh, pleasant, if not happy. Um, so I think we're in good shape for moving on to the June 18th town meeting. I'd like to concur with that also. I think that, uh, I didn't get in there until late afternoon on Saturday and, uh, congratulations to Jessica Spankenabel and Mike and her family and Sue Gowalski, who was there when I was there. I think they did a fabulous job. And um, uh, I know there were other people involved that were there before I had gotten there. So thank you to them also. All right, so I think we have a safe area um, that we can hold town meeting. And I think that we should definitely proceed. I think there are repercussions that if we don't do the budget before July 1st, we can be in a better, uh, a, a bigger problem than what we would anticipate afterwards. So I would like to uh, move forward with town meeting for June 18th. And just uh, the PPE that we're gonna require people to wear are masks and anything else that That's we're gonna it. require people, just a mask. 
And, and I'm assuming mask. that we're going to have masks on too and yeah. be socially yes. distanced on stage. Yes. Uh, yes. Okay. And, and just to be clear, the, the best information we have is that we can't actually require somebody to wear a mask, but I think the chief has worked out a, the cafeteria to kind of isolate those that prefer not to wear a mask um, and basically have the, uh, the audio and, and video of the meeting played in that room for those people. So that way those that choose to wear a mask can all be in the gym together. Well, that's not really an option unless they have a medical problem. Uh, people um, are mandated outside in a group of 10 or more to have a mask on. So if they are in a room and do, pre to, do not present with any medical illnesses that prevent them from using a mask, um, those are the only people that are not allowed uh, or can be in a group area without a mask on. So those things, and I'm sure Mike and uh, the Board of Health are keeping an eye on that, uh, but those are the strict guidelines that we have to adhere to. Uh, D David uh, got a little bit more information, I think, from the Attorney General's office where we can't actually prohibit someone from participating if they don't wear a mask, just like for uh, this the election this past weekend. If someone absolutely refuse to wear a mask we can't kick them out and not allow them to vote because it's a civil rights violation but david I, you can probably speak to that a little bit more you uh summarize it quite uh, quite correctly that we can't uh, deny people the right to vote i have a question i don't so. think we're denying them the right to vote but in congregating with a large amount of people uh, we do have the right to set those guidelines for the protection of other people that are in that room. And I think that that's a different basis. Um, if they choose not to and they uh, decide to be in another room where the audible uh, town meeting is taking place, then that's, then that's another issue. Um, but other than that, not uh, allowing them to be in the room with people that are wearing masks, and following those guidelines are certainly things that we need to take into consideration. Yeah, I, I, I think we would be legal to uh, segregate them in a room as long as they have the right to speak and video of the rest of the meeting. Correct. Right. Yeah, that's what the chief has planned is those people that choose not to uh, or can't for whatever reason will be in the cafeteria, I believe, and everybody else will be in the gym. Correct. And I do understand some of that with people with asthma and things like that, that uh, should not or it's, it's not advisable for them to wear a mask with people that are asthmatic. So I do understand that portion of it. Okay. All right. Do we need anything else on this or can we move on? No. Or, or, or we, uh, who wanted to say something? Valerie. Oh, Valerie, go ahead. I, you know, being someone who has the condition that put me in a fair amount of fear of this virus, um, I'm very uncomfortable being in that room, even though it's a large room and there will be spaces. And, and, and uh, so I'm just wondering, is there a way that I can beam in to this meeting uh, and be present, you know, t technologically rather than being present physically? Uh, we could look into that and uh, get back in touch with you. <coughs> okay. Okay. Thank you. Do, Valerie, do you need somebody that signs to you while you're Zooming or not? No, no. Actually, this, this is actually, I can hear better this way than I can in a room. So this is actually good for me that way. Thank you. Okay, thanks. I do have one thing with the mask. If, um, the people that are talking, it might be difficult when people are up at the podium, if you have the mask on, or maybe we have the podium separated or something like that, that they could take the mask down because people mumble as it is sometimes. And with a mask on, it's so much harder to hear. Mm. I think a lot of people can. have told me this. Many, many people have told me this, that um, they don't realize until now how much they rely on lip reading. Even people who didn't realize and um, so I'm just like, I know, welcome to my world. I can't really communicate with somebody with a mask on. Yeah. I so think when somebody's at the podium as the governor does, if he is uh, six feet radius of being from somebody, the person at the podium can take the mask off. 
But are we going to have the wipes there for each person to clean the microphone after the previous person has spoken? Mike is going to take care of all that. Yes. All right. So do we need any votes on town meeting or are we good, David? I think you're good. Okay. All right. Let's move on. Uh, let's do Kestrel real quick because I, I, I know she's been here for quite some time. So um, we have 6.4 Kestrel trust conservation restrictions. And, um, Kestrel trust requires that the town approve two transactions. One authorized the conservation commission to serve as the second signatory on a coal holder agreement for a conservation restriction on, pri on a privately held parcel on the Hoyle Grange and approve the terms of the conservation restriction on several parcels of land owned by the town of Hadley on the Hoyle Grange. And this is a conservation restriction that has been reviewed by the select board and approved by town meeting. Town council has reviewed and approved. Um, so would uh, Castro like to speak to these two items? I'm happy to answer questions, but I think it's fairly straightforward. Okay. Uh, given that the town's been involved and reviewed all the documents. I'll make a motion to accept the uh, documents as uh, presented to us for the properties in question. You got a second? I get a second. Okay. And uh, any further discussion? I have one question. So this is, is this the final stage of the reservoir properties? Uh, is, is everything done now with those or is there more to the process? Um, the only thing we're waiting for is the article 97 vote by, by the state legislature. So that legislation has been introduced, but we don't have a date for the vote yet. Okay. And, and the reason I ask is that we had, promised that we would remove those no trespassing signs and open up the area once we had all those approvals. So I just wanted to keep on top of that, but okay. Mm, okay. Uh, yeah, we, we, I know that uh, we're working on a map to show the areas where hunting is available and, and to help the town figure that out. So we're happy to help with that as well. Okay, great. All right. So all of those in favor. Aye. 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 No. Right. <laughs> I got to keep my perfect record on this. <laughs> I thought to so. The end, right to the end. <laughs> all right, so this is all set. Well, thanks for hanging around for so long while we got that done. All right, thank you. It's thank interesting you. discussion. Good luck with your town meeting. Okay, right. bye bye. Thank you. All right, so we'll move on to uh, let's do six point one select board liaison assignments. As uh, since we have an, uh, an outgoing member and a new member, um, general government is open, um, and you know if we want to change up any of the other departments, uh, let's have a discussion about that. The areas are general government, public safety, education, public works, human services, and culture and recreation. I would like to keep public safety, please. I was wondering if I could switch from uh, this education to general government. Sounds good. Anybody else like to, I, personally, I'd like to keep DPW, but um, you know, if anybody else wants to make a claim to it, I'm open to that too. I was actually thinking of suggesting if Jane could maybe do human services and culture and recreation, since she does have such a close relationship with the Council on Aging already, that might be a good match. It'll be fine. What to think Works of for me. about that? Works for me. All right, so we would have Christian at general government, uh, Joyce at public safety. Who would have education? Okay, I'm, I'm kind of hurt. I'm just going to say it. But that's right. <laughs> don't trip over yourselves, really. Don't trip over yourselves. I, I, I'm the one with the free time. I'll do education. <laughs> okay. All right. Great. Thank you. There you go. All right. And then so I'll keep public works, if that's okay. And uh, human uh, services and culture and recreation will go. Uh, John, what do you have? Do you have uh, anything? 
I said I think I had COA and Veterans Services. Mm. Okay, I'm so not sure. Would you like to keep Veterans? Oh no, I uh, I think I had TV five too. All right, so I, and I think you had Park and Rec as well, right? Yeah, Park and Rec. That's the other one. Yep. Yeah. All right, so you'll keep Park and Rec, Veterans Services, and TV five. Sure. Okay. And then Jane will take counsel on aging and is, is that going to be a, while we're on this subject, is that going to be a conflict now? I don't think so because I'm not hired by either of you. I'm a volunteer at the council and I'm elected here and having just done my conflict of interest test. <laughs> I, I'm just popping a question because I'm involved in it with the DPW and the fire. So, right, but you're paid, and that's a different kettle of fish. Okay, David, any issues there that you know of? None whatsoever that I can see. Uh, we'll just do a check in with the State Ethics Commission just to be squeaky clean. But I think you've got a good slate there. All right. So, do we need to take a vote, or are we all set? So. Part of the title you handed me was culture. What is that? That would be library, um, uh, historic commission. Uh, Ag agriculture. Yeah. You don't have to worry about that in the schools, Jane. We don't have any culture in the schools, so you'll be, you'll be fine <laughs> in that regard. <laughs> <laughs> Jane. All right, I assume somebody will give me a list of who the contacts are for the ones I don't know. Jane has got everything not. prepared for you anywhere anyway, Jane, with the schools. So Oh, Anne, I'm not worried about. <laughs> and I'll still be in touch with you, Anne, so don't worry. <laughs> I'm also on the municipal building committee also, so that was also part of my my duties also. Jane, would you be willing to allow me to have the uh, agricultural uh, committee? Sure. Okay. And I'll keep the municipal building committee. Is that okay with people? Yeah. yeah. Okay. All right. Uh, David, do we need a vote or do you have the rundown at this point? Because I couldn't uh, leave them off. I'm good. Okay. All right. So we'll move on. Uh, Chief Spanknables here. So let's talk about the ambulance contract. Chief, do you want to talk about this a little bit? Or Joyce, maybe you could do that? Um. I, I, between Mike and I, I think we you all have what's uh, written in um, that we've seen. There was a slight increase in the municipal building. I mean, municipal building. God, municipal ambulance. Um, so uh, I don't. I think it's very much uh, speaks to itself. If anybody had any questions to it, everybody have a chance to review the contract. Yeah. Chief, do you want to talk about it? Yeah, I just wanted to say it was, um, just so everybody knows, Action uh, President Mike Rowanka was nice enough by, by us redoing this contract rather than taking on the third year option. We redid the contract and he reduced the percentage increase uh, to 2% rather than 5.5%. So that was a cost savings for us by redoing this contract. And he's agreed to do that over the next three years. So that's a uh, pretty substantial savings for us. How did the rebates look? Are they on par with what we've uh, had last year? Um, I mean, the the contract that they put together, they are, they are putting together the rebates in the same form that we had for the past two years. But just remember that we are running a little bit light this year on responses. So they're I don't know if we'll reach the milestone. I'm sure we'll get something back, but I don't know what to project at this point. Um, they just advise us to be cautious on that. Um, just until we get through the next couple months, we are starting to see an increase again in calls, but uh, just to be careful with what we might project to get back. I don't know if we'll get the full amount. Okay. I, I think all the ambulances right now are trying not to, um, take patients to the hospital unless absolutely necessary. Um, it's not saying that they won't. They just are being more cautious about it, uh, evaluating the situation before they go to the hospital. Um, and, you know, I'm not, 
like I said, every situation is uh, uh, in its own. So um, I know that that's what they're doing uh, around the uh, Hampshire County. I have a grandson who's an EMT and he's saying that they're seeing a lot of people who simply might have gone to the hospital because they sprained their knee or did something. They're choosing not to expose themselves to that environment. And so they're not calling the ambulances as much. That's We're having, we've had a more increase in my office for our injury clinic um, that people have been coming in there, uh, opting not to go to the hospital, but coming to a clinic that uh, is safe, uh, well manned and um, taking care of people in a safe way. So that's, that's the things that we're projecting uh, for this area. Can I get a motion, please? So moved. All right. Second. Second. We got a second. All right. Any further discussion? All right. All those in favor. Aye. 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 All right. Thank you, chief. Uh, David, I, I just, if we could, at some point, go back to the liaison assignments. The only thing we didn't talk about was the senior center library and fire substation construction projects. Yeah. And at, at some point, just we, we didn't talk about those three. Uh, we can do that right those now. Are assigned, those are assigned a little bit different as a committee, as a committee posting, not necessarily a liaison assignment for the general that y'all typically have done. Okay. 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 So I'm assuming that Jane would probably want to stay on and finish up the, the building process for the senior center. Yes, please. All right. And then, um, Joyce, are you wanting to stay on for the North Hadley fire station? Yes, please. Okay. And but then, there was, Molly uh, had been doing the library and it was my understanding early on that select board had assigned one of each of your members to oversee the financial parts of this. And that's why we were lucky enough to have Christian on our, group right and before that we had jerry divine right i know that molly had mentioned she would like to stay on um at least to finish out the project i think that would make sense if we do need a, a select board member i think it'd be great to appoint one but i'd like to allow molly to stay and finish out the library project since she's you know two months to completion here or something along those lines yeah, I had talked to her and I was just going to offer to be like the official liaison and then, you know, but kind of let her uh, mainly do whatever is required on the project or take the credit just so we had an official channel. I'd be willing to do that and okay. work with Molly on it, however it works. So, um, yeah, either, either that or I can take over for a month or two here with the library and senior center, mm -hmm. but. I'll right. be fine. Do you want to do that, John? You want to take yeah. the library? Yeah, that that's fine. And as long as Molly's going to finish it all up, if she can just keep in touch with me and let me know what's going on, then that's fine. Or she's going to report back to the board, uh, Christian? Or No, you have to go to all the stuff and know what's going on and then report to the board. I, I've been over there. I've been I've been keeping up with it. No, no, we're talking about we're talking about meetings, John. The nitty yeah. gritty parts. That's fine. Whatever you know, if Christian wants to do it, that's fine. If I, if you know, guys want me to do it, that's fine. The All senior right. center is just about you, done. John. I mean, I, I don't mind. I've worked with everybody there, so I don't mind yeah. keeping in communication with them and. Uh, pushing it forward, but if it's something you want to do, I'm happy to have you, you know, happy to have you entertain it if you want. So it's up to you. All right, somebody make a motion. I, I think Christian, I'm not going to knock you off, John, but since Christian is already familiar with um, having dealt with those people on the library committee, if you don't mind, yeah. Chris, uh, continue with that. That's yeah, that's fine. Know. And, you know, he was chairman too, so he was involved a little with both of the projects also. So, yep. So that sounds fine. Okay. Okay. Motion, motion to approve the liaisons for those building committees. Second. Okay. Any further discussion? No. Okay. All those in favor. Aye. 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 All right. So moving on. Um, FY21 audit contract. And mine's not loading now. There we go. Um, 
Town Administrator and Treasurer recommend a new contract with Melanson Heath to provide audit services for FY 2020 through FY 2022. So I get a motion. So moved. Second. Second. Any further discussion? All, right. All those in favor? Aye. 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 All right. Um, Next thing on the list, town council search. Um, I asked this to be put on. Molly had brought this up previously. Uh, the town count, the town administrator and treasurer. Oh, oops, I'm reading the same one. Sorry about that. Select board will discuss going out to bid for legal services. The town's current law firm is KP Law. Um, my particular feelings are that we're long overdue for this. Um, I'm not impressed with the responsiveness or the uh, aggressiveness of our current law firm in defending the town. So I'd like to see what else is out there, but uh, open to hear what everybody else has to say. I'll make a motion that to approve this RFP. Uh, I think it's worth um, at least exploring our options and seeing who's out there. I'll second that, Christian. Any further discussion? Yeah, about four years overdue. I've been bringing it up every year. You were we just- We like listening to you, up. John. <laughs> so if, if we put out an RFP and if the same company comes back with the low bid, even though we're not happy with them, how does that work? In the best interest of the town of Hadley, we may not go with the low bid. I think we'll, we'll, have, to see. we'll, sure. we'll have to see what other ones uh, come come out. David, did you want to make any comments about how this would be selected? Are we able to pick someone based on other amenities like customer service versus just price? Yeah, so what you put down for selection qualities, the, the, final, the final determination will be the best quality at the best price. Sounds so good. The, so low price doesn't drive this whole thing. You, you have the ability to shape it so that you're looking for the best quality. Okay. It's, uh, it's all in the RFP. So, you know, whatever you put in there um, and how we, uh, how they're being paid, whether it's by the hour, uh, by the year or whatever, there's many factors that play into it on how you would uh, develop your RFP. Right, so we have a motion. Do I have a second? So we is did. this is the motion to go out to bid or to work on the RFP and then we look at that before it goes out? I to go out so to you, bid with the RFP. So there is an RFP attached to your um, agenda item. Correct. Do you want to review that? I don't believe I got that agenda item. I did. Okay. Are you in board docs? Uh, yeah, wait a minute, let me get there. No, I haven't reviewed it yet, but I don't have a problem with it if the rest of the board's read it and, and is happy with it. Sounds good to me. The sooner the better, before July 1st. Right. Yeah. yeah. I think it looks good. Jane, would you be okay with... Uh, yeah, board? I'll go with it. I'll go with it. Okay, and then you can have a chance to review that and if suggest yep. any changes. Okay. Yep. All right. So, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Uh, next thing I have is transfer station. I asked David to put this on there. Um, currently, Northeast Solid Waste Solutions operates uh, trash and recycling at the old dump location. Um, my understanding is we allow them to use the location for free in exchange for operating uh, the facility. They keep a cut of the recyclables, which obviously has changed a lot in the last couple of years. Um, and then any profits they make from you know, transferring trash. Um, what I would like to consider doing is put them on a month to month going forward. I know they were talking about some increased rates and other things until we can look into this further to see maybe if it's worth going out to bid or looking into other options. I don't want to necessarily kick them out of there, but I'd just like to put it on a month to month to give us a little flexibility. Didn't, didn't they say though in um, their uh, proposal that 
Um, they would stay at the same rate, only they would reduce one day, uh, having one day during the week and one day during the weekend uh, during this uh, time that we're, uh, we're having. Um, that's, I read that someplace within the notes. Yeah, I think that's during the COVID-19 issue. I'm not sure if that's going forward, Jennifer. You would... so, um, Patrick Kennedy is the gentleman who runs the Solid Waste Solutions. And he was discussing with me doing a $5 increase and dropping it from Monday, Wednesday, Saturday, just to Wednesday and Saturday and um, doing a hundred dollar fee. But when he sent me the information to provide to y'all, um, he took away the increase and just dropped the Monday. So it would be Wednesday and Saturday. And he was comparing us to a town named Bar or Bear. I'm sorry, I don't know exactly Bear, how. Barry. 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 Okay. And so he said the population's the same. Um, and Monday is the slowest day. And he said he had looked at that. Um, but he he said this is just because the cost of recycling has gone up so much. Um, but he felt that it would be um he felt that they could reduce the Monday and not do a rate increase. So it would be Wednesday, Saturday with no rate increase. Are we, doing this, are we doing this for just a year or is this for a long-term contract? Um, I would have to check the dates on it, but I believe it's for the year. Okay. And I don't think it's COVID related. It's the new, um, con it's the new uh, recycling contract with the MRF which is okay. the recycling place in Springfield. Yeah. David, just want David Nixon, correct me if I'm wrong. I don't have a problem with the two days a week. I think that's doable uh, for pe people. At least, at least it gives them an option. It's not an increase in the fee. People can either do it on Wednesdays or they can do it on Saturdays. I think that's, that's okay. Yeah. The only, just, problem, the only problem is in the summertime, when it's hot and the people are bringing their own bags, they probably want to throw a bag out three times a week rather than have that smelly garbage around for two days. Can we ask to modify it so that it would be three days a week on uh, from June 1st to September 15th? I can take that back to him if you would like. Yeah. I, I think it would just put us in a risky situation if we say month to month, but we collect permit fees, I think in June or July, if I'm wrong, I would hate for them to collect fees from everybody and then like, Hey, see you later. You know? Um, yeah. No, that makes sense. Uh, so I, I feel like maybe just saying, Hey, next year, we're going to put this out to bid or in, you know, April or something. I don't know what the month is, but, but do right. something along I those lines. Yeah, I don't think we can do a tenancy at will right now with trash. Right. So then, <laughs> no, because they could say no. Forget it. I'm leaving. Yeah, yeah exactly. We, I'd so, rather get into a year contract with them, and uh, you can't do a month to month on this type of contract. All right. So then, can we put them on notice then that we're going to be looking at other options for next year, so that way we can maybe find a way to uh, do some better recycling or maybe offer better services or at a better price. Well, and then we can get a generalization of actually what's happening in a year's time also uh, with trash within the uh, uh, area here between Hampshire and Hamden County, wherever they have to uh, haul their trash to, that plays a factor into it also. So, you know, I think there's a few things that we need to look into before we just, you know, cut them off at the legs at this point. This was something I was going to bring up with y'all um, at your June meeting is the fact that the town of Hadley's recycling coordinator has not um, been participating in the last few years. Um, and let oh, me know. Dad. Who was that? It was David Dudek. Okay. I, I don't even know if he lives in town anymore. I believe he does, but that's who it's been the entire time I've been here. But that was going to be one of the things that I brought up at your June meeting about y'all need to find someone else to appoint or see if we can find a volunteer for that because it's a volunteer position. All right. I won't use my Southern accent tonight. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Love you. 
Right. So <laughs> why don't we let Jennifer go back to Solid Waste Solutions and see what they can do about the day, uh, the additional day a week. And then uh, later in the year, we can look into some other options. And, and maybe yeah. they are the best solution. I don't know. But it doesn't hurt to look into it because I don't think we've looked at it in quite some time. Yep, that sounds good. You know, even okay. if it's min even if it's uh, minimal hours on Monday throughout the summer, uh, rather rather than the whole day on Monday or however they were doing it, you know, just just something to negotiate with them. I, I think on Monday it's it's like one to five already. It's not a crazy amount of time that they're open. So oh, okay, it's gonna look up but that it, course, but but it would it would be interesting to know what they um also uh, participated if somebody's bringing their trash on a saturday are they actually back there on a monday so i mean let's let's have some numbers from them on yeah. actually how many they have coming there on a monday maybe that's well, what they're basing it on that it's not been uh um, yeah. you know financially good for them to have that option so let's hear from them so i don't even know are, if they're, are they tracking them or do you know if they're tracking them or they're, they're tracking how many visitors there are on a day, and Monday is the historically low day. Oh, okay. That, that's, why, that would, yeah. that's why they came up with this option. I can talk to him about um, doing this, the Mondays for the summer, but they do, the reason why we all have this tonight is because they need to go out to print for the new flyers with the yeah. dates and times for everybody to give everybody time to get going. To get them back. I like Christian's idea of shorter hours. Currently, the hours are one to six on Mondays. And even if they did three to six, that gives people after work, assuming there is work for people, or, you know, at the end of the school day or whatever, time to take their stuff. It's not right in the middle of their day for whatever they're doing. And it does let us remove things that might be smelly over a longer period yeah or one to four or something like that yeah i completely i'll take this back to him uh first thing tomorrow morning okay okay jennifer does that give us enough time to approve this at our june 3rd meeting and then get them to print or probably not honestly he wanted he wanted to take this to print last week but i i told him that it had to wait it had to wait for y'all to discuss it um I don't know. I don't know what June third does for printing and turnaround for a July first start. I think I think that might be cutting it just too close. Can we give Jennifer approval tonight to do what she can best do, given what we've spoken about, without David, bringing it back to us? Jennifer would her. prefer if you gave it to uh, the select board chair or the town administrator, I'll take back the notes and let one of them make the final say. Yeah, so. just email, email us with the decision. And uh, uh, David, you can sign off on it, or David Nix can sign off on it. Yeah, how about we just make a motion that we give uh, David Phil the approval on this after Jennifer goes back to Solid Waste Solutions to make a decision sooner rather than later. I'll second that. Yeah. Discussion. All right. All in favor. Aye. 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 Bye, David. Uh, I'm good. Whatever it was that you decided, I didn't hear that. Comment, but I'm going to do Jennifer it. Will, Jennifer will fill you in. All right. <laughs> <laughs> all right. You're uh, now in charge of the trash contract for the town of Hadley, David. <laughs> Yes. You know, yeah. Now in charge of the trash, Christian. What are you talking about? <laughs> David will supply the extra hours at the dump. That's what y'all said. I put it in the minutes. Yep. There you go. All right. So next on the agenda is select board meeting schedule. For the most part, I have two meetings a month scheduled out through January of 2021. Uh, for the most part, the first and the third Wednesdays of the month. Um, obviously, June is going to be a little different because we have an annual town meeting. Um, we may have a, uh, public forum, but I, my understanding is that may be done electronically rather than in person. So I'm sure we can work out those details with the moderator and, um, you know, TV five. So any issues with the proposed schedule going out through January? No, to be adjusted as needed. 
Can I get a motion on that? I'll approve that with the Second. adjustment as needed. Second. All right. Any further discussion? All right. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Um, do we need to do, David, do we need to do anything tonight with the town administrator search or is this just an update? If you could uh, uh, appoint a screening committee or at least uh, ask for letters of interest, um, they would like to get uh, going uh, towards the end of May. Okay, so I assume five person committee or are we doing larger than that? Uh, this is going to be an interviewing committee, so usually five, three to five. All right. I think I'd probably like to see five since it's a very important position. Um, thoughts from the rest of the board? Sounds sounds fine. Right. Fine for five. So what do we do? Two members of the select board and three members of the public, or are we thinking some other ratio? Uh, you might want to throw the school superintendent in there. Okay, so one select board and superintendent, or two select board and superintendent, and two members of the public. That sounds good. Yeah, that sounds good. How, how about anybody from public safety? I, I was thinking one of the chiefs, maybe, but I don't know if we'd want to do that or not. But I, so when I had the lieutenant fire chief on the search committee for the senior service director. So we had representation from public safety, but we didn't tie up any more of Mike's time than necessary. Okay. So that's a possibility. So how about just a representative from public safety, whoever they would like to send? Yeah, I mean, it can be fire or police, whichever one they would like to designate. Okay. So we'll let, Mike, we'll let Mike and Mike uh, talk about it and see which, which one they would like to appoint or take it on themselves or have somebody volunteer, that would be fine. All right, so two select board, superintendent, uh, representative from public safety, and a member of the public is what we're looking at. Correct, that sounds good. All right, can I get a motion to that effect? So moved. Second. Second. All right, any further discussion? All right, all, good. All, all those in favor? Aye. 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 All right, Annie. Annie, did you hear the news? You're on the committee. <laughs> I did. That's what the, my running back and forth. Look, I'm trying to I'm trying to brown butter and not burn it. So sorry, full disclosure. I'm trying to do dinner in this. But yes, thank you, and I appreciate it. That's the darting back and forth that you see. And thank you. Oh, and it's gonna be a Zoom interview anyway, right? Probably so. Yeah. All right, so um, next on the agenda, it, do we have any major updates with library, fire station, and senior center, or can it wait till the June 3rd meeting? Because we're cut out. Um, June 3rd, we hope to be in our new building. We're hoping to get our certificate of occupancy next third, a week from tomorrow. Okay. We are, out of, we are out of Most Holy Redeemer, except for the phone service we're using. So we will not, our boxes have been moved to the new site. So after the end of this month, we will not be paying rent. I don't know if I have enough light. We'll find out. Linda, your mic's on. Oh, sorry. <laughs> uh, all right. So then we'll make sure that we put out a uh, Nixle alert once uh, everything's been transferred over and once the building's open or, or occupied. So that way everyone's informed and we'll put out a tiny email blast as well. Um, anything else critical or can we move on to... Uh, uh, the COVID-19 and the administrator report. I do have something for fire. Okay. Uh, we have a bid in for, um, I have talked to a few people and David Nixon, you're aware of this, that we want to run fiber optic from uh, center uh, station to North Hadley station. And I think I sent you some materials on that. The final price on that is $93,208. Um, and this will be, uh, much needed. We can actually tie into it throughout the town also. So this was a good thing for us to do. Um, so I, I wanted to have a vote on that tonight, please. Was that an original item, Joyce? No, it was not. But we found that because of the communication up in North Hadley with the tower that's up there, it's poor communication. Yeah. 
So running this fiber optic, since we did have money in the contingency budget, we felt that this was important, uh, not just for the fire and police, it's also important for the rest of the town, which will be a, a benefit to them also. And I thought the repeat... I thought the repeater at the old Montgomery Rose was supposed to alleviate most of that problem. It doesn't actually. There's not yeah. that great. Uh, they're not finding that there's good communication there with with those with those towers there. How much of a reserve does that or a contingency fund does that leave? Okay, so I'll just an, another part of that was uh, we did come in with a bid for. Remember, we had talked about the. Uh, council uh, bid with all the equipment that was needed. The final number on that was $175,101. We did have some contingency in that. So that does bring us down to $235,396 uh, left in the contingency. That, that's after installing the fiber optics? Yes. Okay. All right, could I get a motion? Yeah, move. So move. Second. Further discussion? Uh, uh, Joyce, is it going to be above grade or below grade, the fiber optic? I believe it's going to be above grade. Okay. Yeah, all the lines that are there are all above. Correct, yes. Okay, all those in favor? Aye. 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 So right. in that same... Thing. Mike spoke to me yesterday about wanting to do the same thing from the senior center, but we don't have any numbers yet for you. I think once we're able to get this set up that, um, like I said, it will be a benefit to the rest of the town buildings um, eventually to be able to tie into it. Okay. All right, David, any um do we need to convey anything on, under COVID-19 other than the Unified Command still meeting, the governor's allowing some things to reopen, so stay tuned, uh, or do we need to spend more time on that? Yeah, the only the only thing with, that I'd like to add to all of that uh, is um, the uh, community development block grant for COVID-19. Um, uh, short turnaround's got to be done by uh, June 5th. I'm going to ask you to take a vote on June 3rd. Uh, basically, we have up to $400,000, which we can give out as uh, grants to micro-businesses. This would be uh, businesses of five people or fewer. Um, uh, the One of the employees has to be an owner, and the owner needs to fit within low to moderate income uh, requirements. Um we're talking about partnering with either the town of Amherst or the town of uh, East Hampton for them to be the lead community. They would take over the administration. They would have responsibility for to holding the public hearing, which is required. Um, and uh, so that's the only thing that different. And I'll be asking you, uh, we'll flesh this out and I'll be bringing it to you on the third. Would that be, we would administer, or East Hampton, whoever, would only be for the residents of the two towns that we have mentioned, or is it for anyone in the area? It would be for any town that participated in a regional application. Okay. And right now we're only talking about Amherst or East Hampton. Okay. Okay. Um. David, would you be upset if we passed over your town administrator report tonight? No, I think we covered everything. Okay. Would that would this uh, just quickly, David? Um, I wanted to just uh, take this moment to uh, congratulate Susan Mosler uh, for being elected to the Board of Health. Uh, welcome aboard to this uh, pandemic that we're facing. I'm sure you'll be an asset to the board. But I'd also like to take this opportunity to thank Dick Tessier for his many number of years that he has served on the Board of Health and uh, thank him for his service um, at this time. Thanks, Dick. Okay, any other announcements? I do, David. Yeah. Um, 
on, under ordinary circumstances, the, our, our old normal, I would have been at your meeting with David Eisenfeld this evening because we did go out to ban, can't get this glare away, I'm sorry. We did uh, get two bans yesterday. Um, we have a new bank, at, to, new to us, Adams Community Bank, um, took our $670,000 ban, which was for our uh, vehicles and um, smaller items um, from prior meetings for 1.3% for a full year. And um, on our larger ban for $2 million, which will go to November, taking us to the bond, um, Oppenheimer took our $2 million ban for effectively a 1.2097. They bid it at 1.5, but with their premium, it brings down the effective uh, interest rate to 1.2097. So we're still doing well with our interest rates and um, that has helped bring our interest uh, payments down in uh, fiscal 21. So I wanna tell uh, the select board tonight, also, under normal times, we would be there for all the documents for you to sign. And as you're aware, you also have to sign them in front of the town clerk, and she has to witness that. So I'm not quite sure how that's going to work out. Tonight, uh, the FedEx just came in today with all the documents, and I left it in David's box, and I'll, talk, I'll send an email to him and Jessica. But uh, we need at least three select board members to come in in the next couple of days to, um, to sign them and have Jessica... Uh, at least verify that you signed them there. And then uh, that can get them back out to the Department of Revenue by early next week. So I'll get an email out and hopefully we can pull this together in the next couple we, days. We Does she have to be there to witness the signatures or not? Jessica is in. I am. I can be in at any time. I'm pro uh, primarily working from home, but I, I can be there. But it's actually Jessica that needs to be there with your signatures. So I don't know how she's arranging that. I am, I'm not I'm not aware. Um, that's why maybe we'll have to reach out with you, to you tomorrow after I get an email out tonight to David and Jessica about how this has to be done. Uh, I don't know what I don't know what uh, the arrangements are for her to do that with you, whether it's something on the on the outside steps or what. But we'll work something out. I just want you to be aware we're working out something, and hopefully we can get a witness signature from three of you in the next couple of days so that we can move these along. We uh, I'd be more than, be more than we, happy to stop in at seven o'clock on my way to work. No problem. <laughs> <laughs> I could stop in no, any time during the day. There's oh, one. <laughs> we, uh, we authorized the stamp for the warrants, didn't we? I, I'm not sure this is going to be. Uh, I'm aware of that. And I don't think that's, uh, no, be, it won't work, John, because it, they have to be witness signatures. The clerk has to witness your signature in the borrowings. So okay. this would be an exception. So she needs, we need to have personal in-person signatures from three of you. Um, yeah. So Yeah, I, I mean, if we can do something outside on a step back step or something on top of the mailbox. Yeah. <laughs> I, I know what Bill does from, you know, because he's been witnessing wills in our driveway is <laughs> when people come and, and he's got a table set up out there and they come with their masks and they sign and they go back to their car. And then he comes out with his mask and signs. And there's, there's a, so I, I, there's ways to do this. There's a ways to right. witness things without being, you know, two feet away from someone. So I don't yeah. know what the arrangements are. Um, I have not had a chance to talk to Jessica. The, the, uh, the FedEx just arrived to me late afternoon um, <laughs> after she had left. So we'll work this out. I'm, mainly, yeah, I just want to let you we know. We figured it out so far, so I'm sure we'll make it through it. I, I'm sure you will. We will. Just let, just let us know, Linda. We'll okay. do. <laughs> All right. Uh, Dale, Dale, Thank uh, you. Announcement I wanted to, to remind people, uh, although the Legion's Memorial Day Parade is canceled uh, for this year due to the COVID-19 uh, you know, take a take a moment this uh, this coming weekend when you're out uh, partying it up uh, six feet apart from your friends. That uh, you know to, to think about all of those that uh, made the ultimate sacrifice. And we may we're at about a fifty percent chance that we may still have a flyover on the twenty fifth, uh, depending on what uh, DC says as of this afternoon. So we'll keep you posted, but possibly sometime between uh, twelve and one. On Monday, uh, more information to come if that happens. Yep. David, could I add something there? Absolutely. Yeah, the, all of the flags for the veterans are all out in the town cemeteries. So Thank that's, you. That's Thank done. You. Look, They look good. 
Yeah, thank you thank for doing you. that. Yeah, th well, I got to thank Gary Berg and, t and Ted Buckout for helping with that. There is going to be a small ceremony um, at the Legion on Sunday at 2 p.m. As usual, they will raise and lower the flag as usual uh, with the uh, gun salute. Uh, I just want to have you all make note as you drive by the Legion that Richard Bukowski has refurbished the cannon that is out in front of the Legion. Um, he did a very nice job on that. So thank you, Mr. Bukowski, for doing that. Uh, and if you can find social distancing to come down, and um, they're also going to have a bugler there on uh, Sunday. Uh, if you wanted to come down and honor our veterans at that time, you can, but please remember your social distancing and your mask to be worn at that time. So, uh, And I would like to say that the parking lot at the senior center will be open for the Legion to use if they have an overflow of their own lot. Thank you so we've much. Already, we've already spoken to them or they've spoken to us about that and it will be, it, it's happened. I have to say that the Legion, I haven't seen the senior center, but the Legion parking lot looks wonderful compared to what it has been. So it's been a nice uh, uh, community project for us to have to participate in that. So thank you to everybody that did that. I did have a couple of deaths. Can I do those right now? Yeah. Um, I, I think they're ones that I have not done. Uh, Rose uh, Slazik. Uh, she passed away on 327. Condolences to her family. Richard Deck, who was a longtime uh, Hadley person, he also passed away on 328. And then um, David Weinzick, I don't have his date, but uh, born and raised in Hadley and uh, part of this town. And he does have family that lives in, his, in this town. So uh, condolences to them, uh, his family also at this time. And Joyce, if I can just add one to that. Um, um, oh, my word. <laughs> I just lost her name. Uh, a woman who lived here for years and years. Um, and I can picture her in my head, and I can't think of her name. This is what? <laughs> Where did she live, uh, Sue? River Drive, um, uh, right on the corner of Huntington. Her daughter Liz called me today and told me her mom passed away on May 12th. Huntington and River Drive? Stop. At the Falconry. Who? Where the Falconry is? Um, no, there's no houses down there. No, right. It, Right before it. Yeah. Um, oh, my word. I cannot believe I just drew a blank. Um, Scott. Jane Scott. Oh, died. oh Jane Scott. Oh, yes. well, well, condolences to her family also. Yes, the Scott family that had that all that property on there between River Drive and Huntington. Yes. Exactly. Exactly. Oh. Oh, okay. Well, condolences to Jane's family also to us from the select board. Any further announcements? I just had one quick one. Um, uh, the Amherst Chamber is offering uh, three month or three free months of membership to any businesses in Hadley if they'd like to join. And there's no commitment to extending it beyond three months. But if you'd like to join the Amherst Chamber to take advantage of their resources and grant opportunities that they're looking into right now, you can join for free right now. Great. We like freebies. Can I get a motion to adjourn? Motion to adjourn. Second. Happy, happy right. Memorial Day to everybody. Stay safe. And my last thoughts before you close the meeting, even though we are opening, please still be cautious. Please still wash your hands and please still use your mask. Don't just say throw it to the caution and the wind and not do all these things. We certainly don't want um, a repercussion from this. And of note, if you can go back to 1981 in a farmer's almanac, 
there was a prediction that this would happen in 2020. So interestingly, just go back into that time. You can Google it. Um, There was a a mention of this back then. So uh, happy Memorial Day. All right. uh, All those in favor. Aye. 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 See you June 3rd. Aye. 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 Thank you all. See you all later. See you next week. Bye. Bye Bye-bye.